All right, all right, all right. Welcome to the early morning ESA. I'm Dessa. I'm going to be running Kingdom Hearts Recoded, <clears throat> which is actually like the first marathon showcase of this game in general because we have like one people run. One person. <laughs> <laughs> the one person being right here. <laughs> yeah, like it changes every like aeon throughout the community who runs the game. <laughs> the man on, like, the mantle. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Dessa. With me right here is Logic. Want to introduce yourself? Yes, hello, yes. It's Inside Logic. Uh, I'm very excited for this run today. Uh, if there's one man to show this game off to his fullest, it's Dessa. So I'm very keen to see him really show up and put on a really good showcase today. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So, yeah, we're running any percent, no major glitches. Uh, why exactly it'll be no major glitches? I'll go over that throughout the run. I would say, yeah, exactly. We're going to start right away. And want to do me the honors? Uh, oh, nah. You're the runner, you have to, you know. It's, it's Three, all good faith. Two, one, go. All right. Oh. So, <clears throat> as it's like a general RPG game, this game has lots of cutscenes, lots of text boxes, all that. Luckily, Recode is like the one game where you can skip like everything. If it's a text box, you can skip it like pretty much all the time. Mm -hmm. We have starting choices at the very beginning. We can similar to cage one pick between sword shield and staff and depending on what we choose and drop we get different commands at the start we choose the sword and we drop the shield that way we get quick blitz and sliding dash sliding dash generally for movement quick blitz is just a pretty good starting command because the last one would be fire and fire kind of doesn't really do the trick right and uh, the combat for this game is actually really interesting. Definitely more so unique than uh, than all the other uh, cage games, where uh, Dessa is actually going to be animation uh, animation cancelling his combos. What he wants to do is always go in at the ground, and then right as his finisher connects, he's actually going to be uh, jumping or doing a command out of the combo. Commands are pretty much instant whenever you use them in a combo, and uh, Dessa wants to be on his feet as much as possible, you know, get as many attacks out. And uh, if you know Kingdom Hearts, you know Shadows, they, they love to duck, dive and dodge. So they're, like, Des has got to be really good at uh, targeting. You could all whack them all as we call it, yeah. for example. <laughs> the, uh, the auto target, which is indicated by like the pale um, broken up circle, is actually, um, it has its uses, but also has its detriments throughout the run. For a lot of tech that we have planned, it's amazing. But for a lot of instances where we don't, really want to have it involved it is awful when it gets in the way at times it's so aggressive like as mentioned sometimes it's useful but a lot of times if you see how you're like all right guess we're moving slow yeah <laughs> and use your abilities to quickly scoop over to like the other end of the room something like that mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right so that was the introduction the station of awakening as chad has already mentioned as well we have basically a retrade of a retrade of cage one because recoded story, it's based we are uh, station between cage two and cage three. It bridges the story, the story to some degree. And what happens is basically the journal that recorded the first two events gets corrupted by bugs. And we now send data to Sora because Sora, in every way, shape, or form, is like the hero of this game. We send Data Sora in to get rid of those bugs, figure out what's wrong, and maybe potentially uncover some events that the crew doesn't know about. Because as of right now, in like the lore of Cage, the crew knows about what happened in Cage 1, Cage 2, of course, because they were there, but they were also there for Chain of Memories, which they, and Elvis, frankly, have forgotten about. So basically, what this game is about is figuring out what happened in Recom, and or like that's what it leads up to, and Figuring out how to get to a point where eventually, then in cage three, they're able to face the menace that is they have Right. <coughs> so this is the uh, this is the cool mechanic with the worlds, as Dessa mentioned. Their uh, journal entries instead of the actual worlds, and with how we go and deal with the bugs is actually through these system sectors. Um, the gimmick or the the kind of playthrough when you're in here is there are these special heartless that have different kinds of uh, buffs and just appear differently, which uh, we need to target them to get rid of them. Those are the ones we want to uh, get rid of. There are normal Heartless in the area too, those we mostly ignore. The uh, the yellow shadows you just saw there 
have the buff of fast speed, so they, they every action they would do is just that, like, double speed. There are different variants throughout the game. There's blue, yellow, red, and green. Uh, blue and red are the ones we're going to be seeing uh, a good bit, as I mentioned right there. Blue is uh, regular speed, like normal. However, they're they're a lot sturdier than your regular, your average Joe Schmo. So, like, mm. Dessa is going to be uh, really kind of being aggressive on these enemies for a shadow. Shadow's a shadow, you know, it's not that bad. But when you get to the later uh, later part of the game and you have these already terrifying enemies get these buffs, it's really scary. And the, the red one is fast speed and sturdy, which is like your, your juggernaut, basically. And then, okay. Yeah, so, so that late rush right there was not planned. Generally, the goal of this area is to... You have, like, on the a bottom screen, you, that you see in the bottom right corner of the screen as well, there is an indicator on how many floors each system sector has and how many enemies you have to defeat per floor. Right now, for example, I have to defeat 16 enemies, so 16 bucks. Every floor in this, or like every section here has four enemies. And we want to try and avoid killing too many enemies because only in this area, if we get a Keyblade level up, because you level up, uh, your Keyblades can level up depending on how many kills you get, or how many Heartless you defeat, you gain extra abilities. If it levels up during this section, you get another tutorial screen. It just loses a few seconds. It's not a big deal. But if we can avoid it, we kind of want to. Because I mean, defeating other stuff is just a waste of time in the first place. Mm -hmm. And not getting the tutorial is like on top of that even better. Right. <coughs> Something to note as well with the Keyblades is every Keyblade has uh, a unique set of abilities built on the Keyblade and uh, is progressed by something called the Overclock Gauge, which is the, the gauge you see next to Sora's health. That gauge is really important for the run, and depending on your Keyblade, it's a big deal. Oh, Dessa just switched, that's beautiful. So for level 3 and level max, which is level 4, we get a magic upgrade and an attack upgrade, and that is bread and butter what you want to see in any like RPG ever. So Dessa wants to try and hover around the, the max overclock level. Uh, the thing that Dessa did in the system sector where he did his um, overclock finisher resets your overclock back to level one and you have to grind it up again. So Dessa's going to be very careful and uh, using his commands uh, offensively instead of his normal attacks because uh, the commands don't actually increase the overclock gauge. Okay, dark side. Boss of uh, Destiny Island. For this fight, uh, the start of it is as you would see him in other cage games. He'll punch into the ground and Dessa's going to be very aggressive on the fist. If things go well, we're going to be seeing a two cycle, which will be great. He's also going to be ignoring the shadows because I mentioned about the overclock gauge. He does not want to get his overclock finisher early. Oh, oh that lock on. <laughs> I think this should be fine. All right. Okay, okay swipe good. finish. We're good, we're good. Hey, that's our one would be part of the... <laughs> he, wanted in on that. <laughs> he wanted a piece. Yeah. And so now the, the recoded elements come out now where uh, the coded blocks are part of the fight. Uh, a very similar gimmick where Des is going to want to try and go for a two cycle. Darkseid will punch into it and instead of summoning shadows he produces a massive AoE. And this attack as well. It's a very, very cool attack, to be fair. And generally, like, it's a really cool take on the dark side boss in general, because we've seen lots of iterations of it, and it's always been just like, a, oh, yeah, you just like, hit him for like a minute or so, and then you're good. Yeah. But this one actually brings unique elements into play and kind of teaches you that this game definitely, like, does not even shy away from <clears throat> trying to be a bit more unique. Right. Right. And this one has three phases, and it honestly, like, really well shows what this uh, new combat is about because as you said like the first one is as everything we know just like whack the hand until it's defeated and the second part is you have to combine the blocks and the boss itself and now the guy just turns into a block completely <laughs> yeah so the these yellow blocks are called danger blocks and dessa actually will get hurt by contact and uh, throughout the run, we're going to be moaning and groaning about these blocks because they are a nuisance to deal with. For, for here, Dessa just wants to poke into the block. We do want to be careful because it, there is a risk of dying if you're playing a bit too aggressive. But Dessa's able to... Oh, very nice to get in there. And yeah, just poking in and it is... Uh, oh. Get it! Oh. <laughs> get it! Get it! <laughs> no! Uh oh Oh, 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 oh no. Ooh. Nice. Yeah, let's go. Oh, wait, I got it, I got it. 
Oh. Okay, there we go. There we go. Oh Let's go. <laughs> yeah, so that's like Ooh. only enough one of the scarier fights in early game, just because, and we, we weren't. I didn't mention it yet. We will mess with that in a bit. You have so-called cheats in this game. <clears throat> I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, how do you call it? Like, uh, dang it, I can't even stop myself. <laughs> You're in the hole now. <laughs> they know. <laughs> so yeah, this game is like all like trying to be computer-ish, I guess, for lack of a better term, where you have chips that increase your stats. Like for example, we're gonna be getting an H a blank chip right here. We have HP chips, strength, anything that is a stat basically becomes a chip. Even resistances and elemental affinities. And the so-called cheats are the main gimmick of this. We're using the stat matrix right here. Mm -hmm. And this first cheat that we unlocked, which is there from the very beginning, it allows us to change the difficulty. We start with standard because <clears throat> on standard or generally on any difficulty, the rewards change. You have like a tiering system for the boss, S rank, A rank and B rank. And depending on the difficulty you go with and the rank you get, you get different rewards. And of course, higher difficulty means better rewards. So we're so we're trying to be dark side on standard because that gives us fire edge if we get an S rank, which is really not hard. All the I guess regular challenges, I'm gonna call them, we can easily get S rank there because they're mostly just based on how fast you're, and we're at least like trying to go fast. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a really important point which is uh, pretty unique to this game is there are actually speedrunner chips that you can get in game. And uh, these chips act as like a bonus level up, where they, they share the same effects as level ups. And so that's a uh, very nicely, it's very fitting. We want to try and just get those chips because they're free level ups and free stat buffs. Uh, buffs. So hopefully we got a for Destiny Island. We'll be finding out later. Not important if we do, but it's, it'll be a nice, uh, nice boost. For uh, as we, as we progress, uh, that we're going to be getting a, a access to a really good spells. Thundara is uh, the spell we're going to be using quite a lot throughout the run, and spells in this game give status effects to enemies. Uh, Thunder applies static to enemies, and static. You know, it's playing cage after. And uh, static is, um, you'll see they have like a pulsing yellow aura around them. And if they make contact with you or an enemy, they'll receive a massive uh, hit of damage. That's the main status effect we'll be kind of centering the run around. There is um, a burn effect for fire, which we don't really... We see that applied more to Sora than we do see it applied to enemies. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. But yeah those two uh, um, status conditions are the ones we'll be messing with for the run. All right, and I guess while we're currently progressing, if we have anything. We've got $15 from Evanisha. Says, I hear this Dessa guy is kind of good at this video game. Uh, and that is going towards the Fort Boyard Heroic Mode incentive. Don't forget, whenever you donate on the right side to select an incentive for that. Uh, are you good at Kingdom Hearts, Dessa? I mean, I'd like to pretend. Uh, debatable. Be a good <laughs> <bit>. <laughs> uh, I'll chill out a bit for him. Dessa's actually... Um, one of uh, a very small group of people who have actually beaten all Kingdom Hearts games in one sitting, which is uh, insane, very impressive. And uh, yeah, man, we gotta take you away from these games, <laughs> we, we gotta separate you from the games. And the Monopoly on this. <laughs> <laughs> so these fights very early on are pretty basic. Uh, shadows are your main encounters. For that fight, Dessa took advantage of the auto lock. With the spawns being consistent, Dessa was able to use his movement uh, commands and just zi like zipping all the way between the the heartless without even needing to have them on screen. <sighs> Want to introduce him to my nemesis? I d would love to. <laughs> so oh, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I have him with pleasure. So this uh, boss is system sector specific. It's called the Core Blocks. This uh, this enemy has given Dessa a lot of sleepless nights. And the, the, the gimmick or the <clears throat> mechanics of this boss is basically he will uh, slither around the map and have a trail of danger blocks behind him, which will alternate between danger blocks and a different block in the game. Sometimes in our favor, sometimes there are lava blocks. Ooh, Ooh that's how it worked out. Very spicy. Yeah, so they, they can change their blocks. Perfect scenario is they change to lava blocks, which blow up on impact, which also damage the core blocks. Worst case is we get an indestructible block where yeah. we have to just wait. Exactly. <laughs> so as Electric mentioned, it can turn to any of the available blocks and any blocks means 
It can also, like, it can turn to the red runes, the pride bl prize blocks, the explosive blocks. And also turn to metal blocks, which are indestructible. Ghost blocks, which just phase in and out of existence and are also indestructible. Or bouncers, which are generally also just like another layer of indestructible boxes that can appear. But the worst part really is that later on it can mess up real bad. Yeah, it's, uh, it is really unfortunate when you're on a really good pace and you have to deal with a bunch of core blocks and just a few of them decide to switch to an indestructible block. And they're like, it, the phases take a good bit to change too, so it's a really unforgiving thing to have happen. And you'd think that's like about how bad as it gets, but it does get worse. It's <laughs> so much worse. These guys are jumping around. Like as long as they have blocks training behind them, they will move. And yep. they can move anyway. They can just jump into the air, disappear, and never come back. I actually once, <laughs> funnily enough, had a run die to that. I really hope that doesn't happen again. We already passed the point where it did happen to me. The block, the chain of blocks just decided to go out of bounds <laughs> and never come back. It just left, it was out, had enough. I remember people like started beaming about that, just putting all kinds of music on. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ren just put like some Spanish song about a boat departing on. <laughs> like that yeah, that, that boss, uh, we, we laugh through the pain on that one because yeah, that, that boss is uh, rough at times. Mm. This uh, system sector, for the, the initial ones, they prove to be uh, tutorials to kind of show you the blocks you have to deal with and the enemy types you deal with too. This system sector has the, the phantom blocks, the, the green ones that fade in and out, the bouncy blocks, and... Uh, oh, very nice. That's it. Oh, that's it, yeah. Combination of the two. Right. And it, it kind of lays everything out in a puzzle for you to figure out the foundations of like, oh, we're going to use these blocks for this, like, this style of puzzle. And you like, you piece it together and figure out and then later in the game they combine the blocks and you have just these system sectors where every block is used to its like maximum availability and like potential. Mm. And it, it proves to be some really fun uh, system sectors later in the game. Uh, shout outs to uh, No More Bugs by the way, that song's really good. I'm glad they chose that one to play during the system section, not something like DDD. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about DDD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the music is um, it's a gem. Honestly, this game has a lot of charm to it, and it, like the uniqueness of it is really, uh, really nice. It's a breath of fresh air if you're used to the the main games. Yeah, especially because like with the DS sound font, of course it like isn't as high quality as the especially like the HD games, but I guess nostalgia plays a little bit of part into it. Some of the tracks just sound really good, in my opinion, on the Nintendo DS specifically, even just because of the sound from itself. Right. They did a really good job of that, especially in the later tracks like against Anti Sora and all that. Mm -hmm. We've got around the Note Booyah playing, the Anthem theme. Really good, one of my favorites, probably. Oh, for sure, yeah, it's really nice. So, as we mentioned, at this point is. Uh Basically, just Dessa wanting to be um, to hold his overclock. Yes, there you go. We want to hold the finisher for that large body. The um, Dessa can be using a lot of thunders, but there's actually this metal block that is in a really peculiar spot, and the large body actually spawns like somewhere underneath it. So the usual shower we jump and thunder over it isn't as effective. So Dessa did a really good job at holding his overclock there. And like we mentioned at the start of the run, Kingdom Key has a magic upgrade at overclock level 3 and then an attack upgrade at overclock level 4. So Dessa, once he gets to overclock max, is going to want to use a lot of his commands and try to... Ooh! Nice! Very spicy okay. there, that was really nice. So, real quick, not to cut you off there, but the minimap actually plays a pretty big role because a lot of the blocks... Logic already mentioned how Thunder just... Okay, Ooh, that, that was <laughs> I, I was not sure I did not see the minimap properly. <clears throat> but Thunder just has the, well, Thunderbolts raining from the sky. And regardless of how high up the target would be, whatever it can hit from the top, it will just hit. Like that block, as you mentioned, is in a very peculiar spot, so I can't use Thunder as much. But in other specific situations, like just now, where some are using Thunder in a seemingly random spot, I can look at the minimap and just see that there is a block that I want to get. I know that the block exists, I just don't know where it exactly is, so I use the minimap to line myself up and then just unleash Fandara, Fandara to get the block. Mm -hmm. It's really useful on yeah. occasion. It's important to know as well the, the star blocks with the silver um, encasing 
it requires three hits to break. And yeah, the gray ones. Are yeah, the gray ones. Are still valid. Yeah. So that's a like when we had that moment where we did the Thundara and we had to double take because we didn't think we broke it. It's it's pretty normal if you're mispositioned to have it just not break. Oh, that's oh, a yeah. beautiful like point to get Perfect to. Perfect example. Yeah. So explain that. Whenever you uh, we're at the system sectors now where we have these tunnels connecting room to room, and whenever you finish a floor, it spawns an exit point. Worst case is there's this like setup where you go from a uh, very linear room one to room four. And uh, Dessa was in room four, and the uh, exit was at room one. So you go all the way there and then all the way back. Best case scenario, it spawns in the same room as you. <coughs> Worst case is what we got, sadly. <laughs> yep. Because many of the system sectors are actually consistent. All the ones up until that previous one are consistent. The one in Destiny Islands, the first two in Traverse Town, they're 100% consistent. I don't know exactly where the enemies are, I know what they're gonna do, or at the start at least. And I know where to head at the end because the terminal or the link, depending on if you're exiting or just changing floors, it spawns in a it spawns in the same location every single time. But with the random system sectors, the rooms are like it, there's only so many rooms that exist, and every room has its set spawn. Mm -hmm. But the arrangement of rooms and which rooms actually spawn is completely random. Which means that I can just get a trick by the game, basically, by just getting the worst rooms and the worst layouts possible. And I can't do anything about that. Just have to... Smile through the pain. Yeah, smile <laughs> the pain, exactly. I just have to sit there and hope that, alright, let's hope that the exit doesn't spawn too far away. And then we get something like the previous second. Yep. Salt on the wound, you could say. Alright. And this system sector is also like not too special. It has a few more elements that it introduces that won't really become really. They won't really add too much to run. So if we have anything else, absolutely. We've got ten dollars from IMJV who says, "Hey, Dessa and Logic, happy to see Resident Evil coded at ESA. I got that right, yeah. Good luck with the run, guys, and have fun. That's also going to heroic mode in Escape." game Fort Boyard Adventure which is coming up in about seven and a half hours that's at $132 out of a thousand we've got lots of incentives coming up make sure we keep selecting those when we are donating <laughs> right so that previous block which will never matter again <laughs> I think is the slide block and if you hit it it moves it doesn't get destroyed it just moves around this one will matter in one hour 20 ish there we go. minutes uh -oh. Yeah, in like 1 hour 20 is where these will matter again. Right now, you just recombine the blocks, basically. Task can glitch through that. I can't. I haven't figured out how to do it. It's probably like very particular positioning, but they're very sensitive. Like, if you hit them from a slightly different angle, they already go like all over the place. So I'll just like try to do my best to hit them together, break them, and go for it. Yeah. It, it's really, uh, really nice that these... Uh early system sectors just kind of show you all the blocks it also makes it pretty uh, pretty clean just to go through uh important to note as well that uh, some of these uh, blocks aren't used by the core blocks enemy which is uh is nice because I'll, like a lot of these blocks would just be indestructible so it would be it'd make a, a bad fight even worse pretty much mm -hmm. don't know that yeah and as dessa mentioned previously uh these room layouts are consistent I think part like for, for this world, like, this is the last consistent system sector, and so it is the last. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> so <laughs> Dessa, once again, he knows exactly where to go. the The game has these like blocks to be like, oh, you have to use this now and this now. But because of the movement uh, commands that Dessa took at the beginning of the run, he can just get to the top and fly between uh, the top pla uh, platforms. Yep. Something to note as well is we get SP throughout system sectors, and there's a little shop at the end. Every time we get the shop, Dessa wants to buy, uh, at least in the early to mid game, as many chips as possible. And some extra items scattered in between for excess SP. These are going to be pretty huge for uh, some of the, the circuit boards ability tree that we'll cover in a little bit. Exactly. Like the, I'll go over it a little bit right now. This stat matrix or the circuit board, sphere grid, whatever equivalent you know of. <coughs> it consists of the chips that we place in it but the difference is to like many other those kind of similar systems is that once the chip is placed it'll stay there and you can only swap them out you cannot like completely 
removed out of the system, which will matter a lot later. <sighs> Feeling kind of tired, you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel um, like Desert did in uh, the Kingdom Come Deliverance run. We can uh, kick our feet up for this one. Ah, this is uh, a freebie. Oh. I mean, it's like. <laughs> you, are, you are slumped, my friend. And we've already been awake for three hours. Yep. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Our relaxing time's over. Alright, so. Every world concludes with a keyhole. Same with Destiny Islands, it was just like not as special in that world, I guess, because that keyhole, we entered the keyhole to basically eliminate the bugs out of that world, or at least fix it, because like in KH, you. Even like in the later games, you seal the word and the heartless are still spawning. I don't know if that counts as plot holders, that's just like the residing darkness. I don't know, whatever. In this game, every single keyhole is unique in one way or another. The Destiny Islands keyhole just gives us the free phase dark side fight. Oh, like actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Imagine being tired. <laughs> Um, <coughs> the Destiny Islands keyhole is the boss fight, then we have Traverse Town right here, which consists of a... One might call it auto-scroller, but that's like for the uninitiated, I guess, because there are ways to speed it up. In the first section specifically, there's like only a very small way to speed it up, which is the fight at the end, because all these free sh sections that are upcoming end with a fight. And if you finish the fight quicker, you get out of this part quicker. The side scrollers are, are pretty. Uh, they have some uniqueness to them, which which makes it actually pretty interesting in terms of movement, especially with the abilities. As you see, Dessa has wind spin, which is actually really good for vertical uh, momentum, and especially later in the game too. Um, there there are some side scrollers that are actually pretty interesting in how everything's laid out and the kind of skips you can do during it. So exactly. yeah. It's Really not a uh, side scroll. All right. Yeah, that's all right. And as Dessa mentioned, uh, initially you might look at this and be like, "All right, man, yeah, okay, we like, just got like just get through this." Mm. But w when you look a little deeper into it, it is uh, that there's some room for creativity, which is really fun. So the like the system sectors are like these side scrolling sections and other sections later. They basically have a different take on the commands. <coughs> this one. And they all have like fire, blizzard, thunder, and wind as their theme. Fire in this case is fire lunge, which will be crucial here. Blizzard is useless, uh, which is it just, like just creates an orb above you and deals some damage. The damage is like not horrible, but it's not that good. It would be better if it wouldn't bring the game down to like negative 17 FPS. Like the game chugs during that. It's terrible. <laughs> <coughs> then we have wind spin, as mentioned, really good for vertical movement, uh, movement specifically, which will matter in a very late part of the run. And we have thunder rain, which I used in the first section, which just rains thunder from Sora across the entire screen. Used for the first section to clear the shadows, and right here just to like chill a little bit, have something to do while the game's scrolling around. Mm -hmm. I was also mentioning that these things are not like auto scrollers but side scrollers. That's because either you have enemies to fight, like the large party earlier, the elevator would not start until I beat the large party, while the cycle still continues. So if you don't beat it quickly enough, you're gonna be off cycle as well. And there are also some sections, like when I got to the top basically of this part, where the game does not start scrolling again until you get high and far enough into the screen. If you can somehow manage, like on revisits of this, because this game is actually kind of unique, you can replay the story bits and change difficulties, change other factors of the game, still give you a challenge even after a uh, completely uh, finished playthrough. <coughs> um, yeah, you can use abilities like high jump or air slide to get to areas faster, and that way you would be able to speed it up even more so. But obviously that doesn't matter as much. Any percent that would be something more for New Game Plus where we'd want to try and just advance these stationary sections as quickly as possible. Uh, we will be seeing abilities like High Jump uh, and Air Slide. Those are actually on our um, on our circuit boards. But for right now, we just don't have the means to get there. Uh, chips are the, the things we use to, to go from 
parts of the cycle board, but Dessa wants to be very careful with where he uses his uh, his chips. Because, yeah, as you mentioned, you, you can't remove them once they're placed, but you can swap them around with the ones that are already placed, which is actually going to uh, come into play very shortly, I believe, after uh, Travis Town. Exactly. Now the third section. This third section is, you can select the proc at the bottom, kind of quick. And that is because if you, uh, that'll kind of matter later, if you do vertical movement in this, it does not advance the bar, like the progression bar. But in this case, we just fall down into the deeper parts of this keyhole. And this is where we're gonna fight the boss of this world. If you play Cage 1, you probably have a good guess who it's gonna be. Oh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, you're probably gonna have a good guess of who it's gonna be. You see that right diamond there? I <laughs> actually wanted to get that. I was just a little bit too uh -oh. eager on that fun ring, but it's fine. <coughs> Not gonna slow up very much. Yeah. I actually so, wanna position myself pretty like nah, that perfectly. Good. So right. the, Dessa wants to line up with the like code vein in the back to get a specific attack, which he got. And uh, oh, that thunder ring does not do a lot. <laughs> All right. So yeah, uh, helps with that, I suppose. Yeah. So the, the gimmick of the fight is guard armor will bounce back and forth. Um, Dessa wanted to position specifically to get the right pattern out. This is a the good attack that you can get because it's punishable for the whole way through. And uh, yeah, we we didn't get the uh, the ability we wanted, but this should still be a uh, a safe fight. It'll be alright. Yeah, it'll be just a little bit slow. If I don't get jumped on the entire time. Imagine, yeah. imagine right. losing this fight. Could you <laughs> imagine? <laughs> I mean, life, I haven't, that said, I haven't done that before. But it's, I guess, oh. rather only if you play really reckless. That's fine, like, overall, there we go. that was alright. For not having Fire Lunch, that's okay. With Fire Lunch, the good thing about that, it basically acts as a sliding dash. So I can cancel my combos, or generally I can just cancel my combos of commands as you explained earlier. And with Fire Dash especially, it just deals really good damage, keeps me airborne, and it's really easy to transition in and out of combat. That I use a combo, I use Fire Lunch, then I use a combo again. Just very nice to go back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. This game is, like I mentioned at the start of the run, this game is really, really fun combat, where you're able just to cancel pretty much at any point in the combo for your commands, which can string together to make some really uh, really high DPS combos. Oh, that was a very, very nice. You've been having some <coughs> fights, to be fair. Like. And also Ndaros have been helping me out. Yes, yeah, really, really nice. nice. So for, for Wonderland, every world has a unique gimmick in this game. It's, it's not your, your average, uh, you know, uh, progress through the world, have it done kind of deal. For this world in particular, we need to help Alice uh, basically get her story straight. She really needs to plead her case. Uh, if, if you know the movie, you know the, the concept. However, it's twisted a little differently for this game. And we have to find these inklings. It says out of 16. However, Dessa will only be grabbing, I believe, eight more. I think... Like, I never really thought too much about the number. I think mm. we hit five, actually. All the other oh, ones well. are for side quests, because this game actually does feature side quests, so they're very, 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 very... <laughs> uh, like, kind of everyone. Yeah. Because it's basically just collect item, give it to the uh, give it to the guy, get reward, that's it. And those items are usually not even, like, properly woven into the other... or into the gimmick of the world. It's just, like... Finish the system sector, have enough SP, get the thing. Mm -hmm. So, Dessa, like you mentioned before in the run, he, he wants to make use of the minimap to find these uh, silver star boxes to pick up uh, a couple of chips. And we're gonna be, uh, well, Dessa's gonna be setting everything up, like we discussed earlier, he's gonna be moving some chips around. We want to use our blank chips and less meaningful chips to uh, connect the linear parts together. And he's able to break this with a debug device that he had just picked up. And he gets high jump, which is very nice. Right, now we're fusing the commands a little bit. So, we didn't really talk about the commands. Or, oh my god. <laughs> so, if you fuse a command, or generally, let's like start from the beginning. I think that's good. This game is commands, similar to BBS, which I think this game actually has the better command system by far. It's way nicer tied into the game itself. <coughs> you can install commands, and every command has a so-called, I guess, 
memory space allocated to it. You can hit 100%, but cannot go a single percent over that. By like, there are no means to go over 100% memory space. Our more powerful commands have higher percentages. Like our end game command that we use most of the run will have 24%, meaning that two of them take up half the space. But we still have up to eight command slots. So if we use low percentage commands, let's say like just regular fires, we could slot in eight of them, no problem. But with higher tier commands, I think the highest is actually 24%, I'm not entirely sure. So we can slot like three to four of them in there, depending on if like 26 is actually the limit or not. So we're gonna like jump around, that, uh, bounce around that a little bit. And unlike other KH games, like BBS, where you wanna try and have as many commands as possible, we are trying to get go for as effective commands as possible. Similar to BBS as well, for those who played it. Well, I keep like nonchalantly saying BBS, it's perfectly <laughs> one of the titles. But you can also fuse commands here, which they changed up a little bit. If you put the commands below one another in the same spot, it combines them, but it doesn't fuse them. You can basically like have that, uh, like a trial version of that command. As soon as you remove one of the commands, you don't have the fuse command anymore. You can also commit to that fusion, which is what I did earlier with the heat dashes and Fandaras. And if you commit to those, some special effects can happen, but they like rarely ever matter because it's very unlikely to get them. The level ups, for example, did not matter, and the other things I probably won't even know. It's not even that important. Mm -hmm. That was pretty good, like bring it all together. So <laughs> it was really nice. So something about uh, the, these system sectors as they go now is you actually get challenges that you're able to do. Dessa bet 50% on the first one because he was confident he was going to get it and only 10% for this one. This, uh, you, you give your SP to then get more at the end. These challenges are consistent for every floor and Dessa knows which one he wants to bet, uh, bet big on and just wants to ignore. And thanks to the... Okay. Let's do some. Ooh. Uh oh, oh! <laughs> so yeah, Dessa is gonna wanna. Whenever there's a call block on screen, Dessa wants to play as aggressive as possible. Uh, nice. That was very nice. Dessa has a Blizzard on, which is a piercing spell, and if he lines it up just right, he's able to pierce pretty much most of, if not all, the danger blocks if you set us up right. And yeah, this is the. Uh, uh, a little late, but it's still it. Yeah. Oh, no, there's some degree. On. Purple blocks yeah. require. No, purple blocks require three swings to break, which uh, yeah. it wasn't as uh, as bad as it could have been, which is nice. But yeah, Dessa for for core blocks fights wants to have some core block specific abilities to use because if you go into that fight ill prepared, you have the potential to be really punished. It's a pretty devastating fight if it goes uh, out of hand. Yeah, especially if that guy starts running out. You basically want to give him as minimal amount of time possible to run around and ruin your day. So you want to just try and get rid of those blocks behind him just in any way possible. It's even worth to change your like half your command deck just to make sure that that guy doesn't get away. <coughs> we also didn't talk about this maze. If I would have gotten caught, I would have been sent to the entrance. Not like any specific strats you could do of that in any percent, but later ca or other categories, more completionist categories, actually make use. That's just pretty nice. Like just being able to route in like kind of like a death. Right. And now we got Alice's story straight. So now we're doing a KH1 classic. Oh yes. The Crank Tower, and it also is a hit-based fight, just like in KH1. Mm -hmm. One could say this is like a KH1 retrain. Do you reckon? Hungry. That'd be, that'd be a bit crazy to be honest. I wouldn't nah, I don't know. Nah. Oh, oh you yeah, he was ready. <laughs> Hear me <laughs> talking trash about Kate. Come, <laughs> come here. All right, so. So he took him too. Like he wanted a piece as well on the way out. And they all won one. <laughs> right now, I gotta assume my stance. Oh, yes. <sighs> This, All right. this is Dessa's uh, mashing stance because uh, mashing in this game is actually pretty important for these segments. Somewhat similar to the side scrollers, however, these are more um, heartless uh, oriented. Where basically you are able to skip ahead and spawn waves early if you kill them as soon as possible. So Dessa is going to be uh, mashing his attack, which is this beam of light, as fast as humanly possible to, to kill the enemies as quick as possible. Because, uh, yeah, as Dessa mentioned, the DS is. 
<laughs> always got always got to take a moment for that. Get a uh, little bit of fear rhythm. <laughs> I mean, uh, melody memory. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Death Star wants to like kill them as quick as possible uh, because the uh, as we mentioned earlier, this is still a DS game, and if there is just too many things on the screen, the game will struggle. So uh, Death Star wants to make quick work of it to increase the speed of the the side scroller, but also not to lag the game. And of course, just hit the music a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, for some sections, it luckily doesn't matter how quickly we go. For example, right now, I could have killed this wave like 10 seconds later. It would have still gone alright because the waves are kind of tied to the locations themselves. And both the location and the enemy spawn has to basically be done. You, the enemies have to be deal, dealt with and the section of the rail shooting has to be dealt with. <clears throat> That's when the game continues its wave. Sometimes you don't even have section side to them, just hit the enemy wave and it immediately advances to the next wave. Mm -hmm. So it's not always wise to just go for the fastest, sometimes you can chill out, sometimes you have to try and get them as quickly as possible. Right. So uh, this is the, the boss of Wonderland, Trickmaster. This is uh, phase one of three. And Desso is actually going to be holding onto the lock until he does an attack like this to uh, catch him with the homing projectiles of the lock on attack. And he also used his uh, his Blizzard Sphere to uh, also do lock-on damage as well. And yeah, this is where we mentioned mashing is like really, really crucial. Because when he is stationary, you're able to get a lot of good damage out if you have a really good mash. Which uh, Dessa did in the end. You know, he's a bit of a practice man, you know, so he knows what to do. Yeah, like DPS kind of matters for these sections. In this case, luckily these enemies are all just one-shots, so you just hit them and they are gone. But yeah, as you mentioned with Trickmaster, you want to try and spray the shots as much as possible, get as many shots out as possible. But the homing, like the lock-on attacks, if you get all the lock-ons in, they're not even that bad. They kind of are able to keep up with the mashing. I think the task also mix and matches, even though the task is able to just spray away. But <coughs> it's still like a little bit of a mix and match. And as we mentioned on the side-scroller, there are also specific commands to the rail shooters. Also, again, like, uh, same way, they're elemental tied, fire, blizzard, fun, wind. Blizzard is what we want to see, actually, contrary to the side-scroller, because blizzard error is basically just a guided missile going direct for the enemy and deals a pretty good amount of damage. I can just hold X and it constantly shoots a beam out while I can still shoot properly. Mm -hmm. But obviously it's kind of hard to like mash, uh, to mash A while holding X without like claw gripping or whatever. So what I do is actually use the R button because luckily that one's a shoot button as well. For some reason like they might have actually fought ahead of that which is pretty cool to see. And you can also hold the button to aim like this. You get up to five targets and then more Oh, oh, guided shots are sent out, which is really nice to just accompany with the we accompany with the blizzard errors you have. Right. Uh, on the topic of the uh, the commands that you find the elemental ones, uh, the game is kind of cruel with how uh, it's everything's positioned for mm -hmm. speedrunners' sake. Because as Dessa mentioned, blizzard arrow is the bread and butter for these kind of segments, but they always appear at the beginning of the. Um, of the of the side scroller, which is kind of rough because we're unable to get use out of the other elemental abilities because we need Blizzard Arrow for Trickmaster. Yep. It's re it's really really good against them. <coughs> the elemental uh, things also have like elemental properties to them, which might be obvious to some, but I figured I'd mention it. Like if I try to defeat the Red Nocturne with Fireball, which is the fire version of the fire command here. It would not deal as much damage, say with like Thunder Spear on fin Thunder enemies or other things. Mm -hmm. Which the other three commands are actually somewhat useless. Air Shield, I don't think actually has a like non gimmicky use. It just like flings away all the boxes around you. It's nice to get like just big assortment of blocks away from you. Fireball's just basically a little cone of fire that is in shot as long as you hold the X button down. And Thunder Spear is similar to Thunder Rain, the side scroll where it just emits a wave of thunder that goes across the screen. Which, which funnily enough, which also came up, but it'll matter here, it also hits behind you. So it's like a little, I guess, bell that, a bell of thunders that comes out of wherever Sora is. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get rid of this first wave and collect Thunder Spear. And then I know where the next enemies are gonna spawn. As soon as I see wait two, I just hit X and it immediately clears the screen and everything that's behind me as well. 
and then I'll just use Thunder Spear whatever, uh, for whatever I have here. And this is where the Blizzard Arrow comes in. I gotta grab that and just carry that for the entire thing now. <coughs> yeah, it's really interesting you mentioned about the elemental resistances because the um, <laughs> the, the, the enemies that you see on the, these side scrollers are only um, elemental knockdowns. Which is uh, by choice to, to like, as Dustin mentioned, to make you really think about what ab abilities you're using and when you're using them. But yeah, for the run with with the power of mashing, we're able to to very easily. Sorry, <laughs> I got lost in the music. <laughs> with, the, with the power of mashing, we're able to effectively clean up without any problems. Oh, I was at the wrong part of the song. All right. At least I want to get rid of really quickly if possible. You can get rid of them before the wall, but I kind of messed up on that. Which is fine, because I still need to pass through all of these. And then, and for the most part, just really clear the waves and try to not lose your command. Because if you fall down in these kind of levels, or, well, if you die, you have to restart it anyway. But if you fall down, it just subtracts from some health from you, but you also lose your command. Which is kind of detrimental, especially if only have one blizzard arrow. So I really want to do my best at not losing. But aside from that, until we have Trickmaster, there's anything we have. We have got a $15 donation from Anonymous, and that $15 is going towards Heroic Mode in Fort Boyard Adventure. Thank you very much for that. <clears throat> All right, perfect. Because now we are very close to the next section. We had that bigger wave of enemies right there. We're gonna have the same thing twice right now on Wave Nine. After. A sort of danger blocks. And this way you can start seeing where the game it struggles a little bit, but it's Oh, that was actually kinda nice. That was really it good. was like not nearly as bad as it could be. Mm -hmm. And I can also like soon lift my stance finally. Yeah. Like I can only sit comfortable like this on my own chair because it also like leaned in a little bit. It's a little easy. So uh I the, something to mention with Trickmaster that we might have missed is that uh, phases 2 and 3 are almost completely the same. I believe there is some variance with his uh, with his AI between. Yeah, you can like tilt the screen. Yes, there's that. But yeah, the, the way we deal with him is exactly the same. We never see him tilting the screen just because we kill him at that fast. It's really exactly. crazy. Oops, apparently. Alright, uh, so you've seen us getting all kinds of Keyblades. There are only three Keyblades that matter throughout the run. Kingdom Key, Olympia, and Oblivion. How? Which we have neither Olympia nor Oblivion, so we're gonna stick to what we know, stick with Kingdom Key. Yeah. Kingdom Key is a kind of a crazy Keyblade to get off rip, like even uh, casually with the magic and attack upgrades. It's, uh, it's honestly insane that they would give you that kind of... Uh, that kind of utility that early. Now, we mentioned about Dessa uh, being able to replace chips, and he actually replaced some of his chips with his speedrunner chips. Uh, in case you missed it when we explained it earlier, speedrunner chips are given to you when you complete a world in a certain amount of time, and they are basically redecorated level up chips. They, they, they act very similar, but it's a nice little bonus, which falls very, very nicely for us as we want to do the worlds as fast as possible. Mm. One might think one would want to speedrun this. That's crazy. Could you imagine? <laughs> <clears throat> so, for those speedrun chips, we have most of them routed in, except for the final world, because, well, once you beat it, the game's done. And the first world, because while it is very much so possible to get it, it's, for me personally, it's like a 30, 35 ish percent chance of success to even get there, because the timing is very, very tight. Mm -hmm. You have like five minutes, whatever that alludes to, because it's not RTA and it's not IGT either. It's some metric that we haven't really figured out yet, but it doesn't really matter too much because it's also very lenient for the most part. And in the first one, we don't route it in, but outside of that, well, two through six, we won't check for seven either because that'll already be late enough where it doesn't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. And well, two through six, we do want to get the speedrun chips. If you don't get them, it's not a detriment. Like, it's not like you can't go fast enough in this game, you can't do the run. There are always backup chips. Right? Like, if I would miss the Traverse Town, for example, I would go to the right here instead of to the left and grab a Strength Chip, which is, in the end, we only want the Strength out of those Trophy Chips anyway, so it's the same as just getting the Trophy Chip. It takes, like, 35 seconds to get there. There's always backup for them. 
Right. Yeah, that's, that's the beauty of this game is there's so much variety in the ships that you can pick up and there's, as Dustin mentioned, just a lot of uh, backup choices that there's no, like, if things do go wrong, you're not locked out of the, of the route. You're still able to catch up in regards to stats. And uh, for Olympus, yes, uh, <laughs> Uh, there's a lot to unpack, but basically Olympus is very different to how we see in other games. It's actually a turn-based combat style now. And uh, Dessa, when he uh, attacks, he does a three-hit combo and he has to time uh, the attack button to get maximum damage. Dessa, throughout the whole run, has actually set up his abilities in a certain way to get value out of them in this area. Because the abilities you see equipped right now aren't the abilities we can use in the fight. They actually merge to create a Olympus specific ability. Uh, the one that, uh, I'll wait for it to be on screen because it's, it's very cool to see. But the, yeah, the abilities and how everything is set up is really important for this area and this is the fight we get to see it. Exactly, like all the commands have <coughs> individual commands they transfer into. There are like, I think a total like 15 ish moves that you can even have in the first place and you can mix and match ooh strength nice you can oh, mix and right. match them to get other moves out of them uh where is and uh, there okay and what we did there is we combined two aerial sweeps and a fandara which combines into subjugate and subjugate is just a very big aoe mm -hmm. which it hits everyone and it's in this case strong enough to get rid of all the enemies but, uh, Oh, yeah, the, those the, those red knock are pretty scary because uh, the, the way this works is when you hit an enemy or they hit you, you go into combat. And if you get hit from behind, they actually get a, uh, a turn before you, mm -hmm. which uh, HP management is pretty important for this segment. So that's all, uh, even just for time loss sake, just wants to avoid anything unnecessary. Yep. And I was kind of like, I'm pretty happy about what happened just now. So... After the Hercules fight, you get one of four so-called licenses. There are multiple licenses here. We're only going to see eight during the any percent playthrough, but there are later, uh, later uh, layers of this have more licenses in there as well. There are four licenses we could have gotten: strength, defense, scout, or break. Which scout and defense don't really matter because scout is generally just like never get preempted by the enemy, and defense just gives you better defenses. While strength makes it stronger and break is there to destroy every destructible or every currently destructible block in the area which matters because if you have metal blocks for example they're currently not destructible so they will not break from breaking. So, uh, with how the the combat works Dessa actually doesn't mind taking a couple a uh, couple swings because uh, he actually has a oh, very nice he has an accessory that gives him more HP at low health or more damage output at low health sorry. And what we saw right there was uh, Sora's uh, Limit Break, which uh, occurs as uh, a 10% chance for every correctly timed input. And in a combo, it's about 28 or 27%? Like 27%. 27%. Basically just like three 10% chance back to back. Right. Want to hit it once, that amounts to around 27%. Yes. And uh, it's just a flurry of very strong moves from Sora. And Hercules does a unique one where he does Zero to Hero, which we saw, which is just a big... Uh, big like charge that goes through the line uh we saw in the mob fight that the shadows and soul uh soldiers were kind of lined up in line zero to hero would pierce through and hit all of them in that line mm. i think it only has relevance in that fight otherwise it's just a decent you know extra yeah otherwise damage. it's just like extra damage yeah free damage basically mm -hmm. and so hardest trick in a run oh yeah skip cloud boy yeah cloud is um he he's a really good part member to get and he is really useful, but in the speedrun, it's actually a minute slower to get him. Which is nice. It's not so much time that he isn't worth getting at all. Because it is very useful to have him in the party. It's just that for uh, for Dessa's level and the kind of times he wants yeah, and how everything is routed, it's pretty decent. You have really good odds, even without clouds, to, to finish up the endgame for this world. Alright. <clears throat> We're now coming up to the end of this world. Not the end of the world, the end of this one. And this right here is basically just like a little preparation for the boss that's about to come. We have a few more licenses here, strength and defense license namely, and we only really care about the strength license. I'll get the strength license, uh, defense license, why not? It's there, might as well get it. 
And now we're coming up to Cerberus, and I'll leave that one to you to try and focus a little bit on the... Yes, so Cerberus is uh, is an interesting fight. As we mentioned on Cloud, Dessa would like to stay at low health for the damage increase, but Cerberus is pretty strong, so Dessa still wants to be careful. For the start of it, he used a defense and strength license to increase the strength and the defense. And uh, as we go, we just want to get damage out. Hope for some boarding points, hope for some zero heroes. And uh, yeah, hopefully. Yep. Okay, Dessa is in an okay spot. Oh. Ooh, okay. Okay, so Dessa right there used a single slow to uh, roll out random license. And charge is actually a what pretty decent one to get. Oh, here it comes. Oh, juicy damage there. Very Eat. nice. All right. So, yeah, the charge license is kind of what you want to see because it sacrifices a turn to, in return, then deal triple damage on the next turn. And slow is basically just a random license, which has a one in three chance of giving us charge. And now that we're at Hades, we can, uh, like, cool down a little bit. I'll... Go a little bit more on the defensive to make sure I don't get destroyed by him. And now I just... Oh, nice. Very nice. Now I basically just try to stall out a little bit of time. Because my commands have to recharge now, and it goes, like, by the turn. It also recharges in the overworld, but there is no overworld in between. So now I pop the uh, auto life, defense, auto block, all, like, regen. I just brought up everything, unleashed everything I could, just to make sure that I do not lose to Hades. Because if you lose to Hades, you also have to go back to service which you really don't want to do yeah and Dessa still has the buff from the low health you can tell from the uh the, the siren in the background as well and uh yeah we want to hate is going to be very very similar until we hit a certain hp gate but you know a couple of points cool. yeah there we go and now Dessa is going to be all right i have to another strength list we could have just popped we could have actually made this even faster but it's fine. oh yeah i forgot about that so Hades is now uh, second phase, where he actually has the potential to uh, yeah this attack and summon shadows. Summon shadows is uh, it, it's like okay, F fireball is nice if we're not in crit health, just to like get us down there a little bit. But with regen, it's like once we're out of that threshold, it's pretty hard to get back unless he really focuses you. Yeah, the regen is really just there to make sure that I don't lose, because it's a matter from setting down. I don't need to go crazy. Yeah. And yeah, Dessa, Dessa doesn't have to do much thanks to all block for that. Right, no bowling points. That's kind of sad. Uh, it's it's crazy. I think it's worth to mention when we practiced this run uh, yesterday. I think it was on Cloud. Dessa uh, got three boiling points back to back to back, like an insane fight in general. Like we we both went crazy in the practice room when he got it because it, it was. One of the best fights that we had ever seen. It was incredible. Sadly, we don't get the same treatment. There we go. Very okay. nice. <laughs> Love that. So basically, Hades doesn't really change no matter what you do. As long as you defeat him when your commands up. I scrolled from my commands a little bit to see how far I am. And luckily, I got the charge license earlier. So I was able to just pop it and then immediately go for the kill. Because as soon as I have Star of Faith ready, I can just end the fight. So I basically just tried to stall turns until that point happens. And because I got lucky with Cerberus earlier, getting the, the charge license at random, I was able to just pop it and immediately start. Which is why it didn't even really matter that I missed out on the strength license, because the fight would have ended at that point anyway. Mm -hmm. if, if the fight goes on past Star of Faith, then uh, we're in some dangerous territories. But with how we do those fights now, it's pretty nice just watching the health get looped for both uh, Cerberus and Hades. All right, now Agrava. Yeah. Like we were like even when just uh, getting ready for counter, we realized like, hey, Agrava kind of sucks on every single game. <laughs> yeah, Agrava uh, in the speedrun for this game is where runs go to die. It's uh, it's a bad place. Uh, there's a lot of RNG. Uh, Odessa has seen. Uh, the worst of the worst in this area, and uh, hopefully no one else sees that today. <coughs> but yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a time for sure. Somehow they were able to put RNG in every single iteration of Agrava, and it was always bad. Like KH1, nobody likes Agrava. Everyone is just happy. Well, nobody likes Agrava. It's like uh, wrong thing, but everyone like dreads Agrava in terms of like oh. It, guess it, I'm not being today. Yeah, like well, let's see, like what happens. H2, it's like, 
I guess Cage 2 is like the tamest version of it, but it's still like anime. Yeah. Uh, even Days has some interesting aggro ambition. Mm -hmm. Like Antline. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm -mm. So for Jafar, we actually got Olympia, which is one of the keyblades that Dessa mentioned about equipping. And Olympia has really good range, just uh, as like a standard deal. So Dessa is actually able to very nicely uh, use the initial swing to cover the distance without uh, needing to like run around. Oh, hey, that was a cheeky teleport to be honest. That's the second one too. And so yeah, in a, in a perfect fight as we've seen, minus that teleport, Dessa just wants to go back and forth before Jafar can even get an attack out, thanks to the uh, the range of Olympia. Olympia is more so used as a utility keyblade more than a uh, a DPS one. Uh, just because of the uh, underswing, but it's still, uh, oh, here we go. So yeah, this is the first part where Agrabah kind of starts draining a little bit. You have five rooms here. Four of those rooms are of relevance because <coughs> we now have to search for Yago three times. He can be in any of the four rooms that I'm checking right now, and obviously it has to be in the last one. So it's a one in four chance. All the rooms have the same chance. It's really just running around. And if you see him, try to get to him as quickly as possible. He has, every room has like two or three locations where he can be. If you don't get to him quickly enough, he just roams around within the room. Mm -hmm. He can respawn in the same room, which is why I'm going to re-enter right away. But it, this is basically just hoping that I don't get completely trolled by the game. And yeah, not really much more to it. There's not even music. So let's like bridge it with some donations if we have anything. Absolutely. We've got $15 from Glint153. He says, good luck, Dessa and Logic, for your run later. Chat, you have no idea how much talent is on your screen right now. GG. And that is going to the Play With The Monkey character in the Out Foxies later on tonight. Um, and that is sitting at 55 out of $500, which is the fun and difficult category, I believe. Um, Dessa, can you just tell, how, how good are you at Kingdom Hearts? Can you just tell us more about that? I'm like, uh, this good. <laughs> I have five goods. I have five good. <laughs> that Dessa is a machine in the cage scene. He, you, you don't want to talk. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, Dessa, as I mentioned before, he is a, a juggernaut for the cage series. He, he, every cage game he has had his run in with and has like set the standard in many, many categories. He's definitely someone to look up to if you ever wanted to run a Kingdom Hearts game. Of course. <laughs> All right. Speaking of looking up to, I'm not. The, neither of us are actually pretty tall, so these <laughs> are kind of towering over. <laughs> yes, this is the first instance of the green uh, buffed enemies, where they are uh, enlarged and they have more HP and more stagger. However, we have now gotten access to Magnero. Magnero um, is really interesting, actually. It pulls enemy. Uh oh. Uh, uh, I think it should be fine. Yeah, we're good. Hopefully. It pulls enemies into a uh, into a swivel, nice, right above the magnet. And something really interesting is the the swirl when they're stuck in the magnet counts as a status effect. So if they get inflicted with shock or afterburn or any other status effect in the game, it will actually fall out the magnet, which can be a little scary depending on which enemy you have in the magnet to begin with. Thankfully for that, Dessa got a bit dice if he was able to clean up pretty nicely. I don't win. Well, well. Then scary, and I'm back in the world. Mm -hmm. So something I conveniently ignored because I forgot about it like three or four times. Olympia has a different moveset, as mentioned, because there are basically three types of moveset in this game. The basic moveset you know from most of the KH games. Then there's the Sonic Arts, which we will never see because those keyblades are usually kind of weak for the speedrun. They don't really have as much damage output, and they just like bend around <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Waggle the dagger a little bit. <coughs> but Olympia, as well as two other Keyblades, have the Impact Arts, which is basically slow and deliberate swings that. Hey, that's not uh, slow and deliberate swings that also deal quite a bit of damage. And that's where we're using Olympia right now, because it is one of those Keyblades with Impact Arts on it. Jesus. <laughs> and we kind of just want to make use of that because it's. Quite a bit better than the standard movement set. It also helps us with some movement later, but it also has the benefit of it doesn't have attack upgrade, at least not on level one. It does on level two, which used to be like a backup route, but by this point we're killing so little enemies of Olympia that it's not really in play anymore. 
You, um, you have run into almost every bull. <laughs> Don't <laughs> I'll get this one just for you. Oh, yes. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay, and... Yeah, so Olympia just generally has high DPS, and the level 2 ability is really nice because it's Brick Wall, mm -hmm. which means that we will not be able to stagger, get staggered out of our attacks. I'm gonna carefully say as easily, because I want to say I've seen, like, a few instances where I did get hit out of attacks, but yeah. it's not... Uh, it's not really yeah. yeah and it's also it's a really nice that's a shame it's a really nice perk to have but also kind of troublesome depending on how you play if you're a pretty aggressive player and you have brick wall on and you're kind of getting lit up by the enemies but you just don't realize you can just die and like you're like oh oh yeah i should have <laughs> i should have realized game's bad yeah <laughs> and there's something as well that happened that we didn't touch on earlier in the run that's really unfortunate is there is a small window between when you use a command and when it actually comes out. And Dessa actually got hit when he used the command, but just before it came out, which basically means that nothing happens and you have to wait the recharge time. It's always a devastating uh, like thing to have happen. Just like that very small window that you're getting caught out by that. It's, it's pretty rough, honestly. Yep. Not a fun time. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, you saw that, by the way? Good old dodge left? I did. It's actually good in this game. Oh, thank God. You don't uh, see it a lot, though. It's an AoE move here. Yeah. At least it's useful in one game. Thank God. <laughs> Gotta remake the videos. Good abilities and record it. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. So, these are... Uh, oh, I didn't even notice. Mm. Ah. Mm. Oh, oh they, uh, they, these are more thankfully. So yeah, these blocks bugs are actually kind of scary. They're, they're probably the most aggressive enemies in the system sectors. And uh, very sadly, there will be a blocks bug, which yep, they're, uh, we'll see later. Part of this game, they are an enemy. They're, they're something. They're, they're, they're true. They exist. Something. Yep. Dessa's therapist Rampant. has heard about them a lot. This has been a very, uh, very talked about thing, and uh, we'll, we'll save the trauma for when we uh, have them on the screen. But yeah, uh, for this area too, uh, if these lava blocks weren't here, this fight would be extremely scary because, like I mentioned, the blocks bugs are just very aggressive uh, enemies in general. When you give them buffs, especially the yellow and uh, blue buff, <laughs> it's, it's it's a bad time. Like it's really really terrifying if you do get caught out. If block bugs would be like the worst thing, that would be great, but oh my god, you're <laughs> yeah. not ready. Yeah. But you know, oh, I, 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 I almost feel bad. Exactly. Like, yeah. <clears throat> like, people are going to see it and then realize, like, oh wow, yeah, that, that's like, this, the day's going to get worse. <laughs> oh, this, okay. So, we mentioned. Really, really bad sector yeah, overall. Yeah, this is, oh, this is a doozy. So, the, the optimal room layout. We're at the point now where the system sector layouts are just random. Dessa just plays it as he sees them. And we do hope for circular layouts where room 1 and room 4 connect. But we uh, sadly have to deal with what we have on the screen right now. And if Dessa is as uh, as unlucky as I know him to be... Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, not again! It's the third yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Oh, he's got his running shoes on. He's on his way. <laughs> that is, uh, it, it's always funny to have a little laugh at it, but deep down it's like, damn, man, why? <laughs> you right, man? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and yeah, as we mentioned before, the shops are mainly just used to pick up some extra chips and debug devices. Those are, it's a really good place to pick up a lot of chips. So Dessa wants to be sure that it's SP is very nice throughout most of the, if not all the system sectors in the game. Exactly. Usually if I end up messing up in a speed challenge, it can actually result like very, very bad situations. And where I usually would want to either grab a lot of backup chips or I just straight up repeat the system sector. Because it's, if it happens later on, it doesn't matter as much. At some point those challenges actually become irrelevant and the rewards we get out of them as well. Actually, now that I think about it, Actually, no, they never get it But it's not like a deal breaker. They're, this game is like routed very 
tightly at this point. Like before, I think it was like 2019 when I started with this specifically. Before that, this game was one of the most difficult ones to run and people were dreading it. And even now, like I still have a lot of tight spot in this, like in this route, but it's not like nearly as bad as it used to be. And you can always think with a lot with the uh, chips in this game. Like I've skipped on at least 10 chips. You can get more debug devices. Oh, we did talk about it mm -hmm. for a second. Uh, to unlock abilities, you can just generally go safe, defeat extra enemies, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, it, it's really nice that uh, it's not a punishing route and there is a lot of flexibility and creativity that can be had with the route. Something as well that we mentioned with the debug devices is Dessa actually used one to get Air Slide, which is a really good ability in general, but when it's paired with Olympia, you're able to travel very long distances and clear a lot of big gaps. For example, getting on this falling segment where, at least for now, we just have to uh, clear the enemies to progress and the platform gets smaller. But hey, where'd he go? <laughs> he left, he was out. Uh-oh. <laughs> I, I wanted to just feel, <laughs> see what it feels like. <laughs> the anchor, all the way, the yeah, speed on that. Just use the windsweep and wee. Yeah, it's crazy. All the way down. Uh, yeah, the, to get onto this platform, Dessa actually airstood into the Olympia swing yeah. and without that bit of movement you would have to jump from block to block which can just be a bit awkward especially with the enemies like the air soldiers that spawn behind you that can get a bit scary that was a good fight here yeah now logic can you tell me what jafar is uh jafar over here <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh yeah, unfortunately he doesn't have that line in this game in Cage one he has a really funny land that we can start <laughs> with about. I, like, I, I love like the fight in Cage one Everything he says is in such a weird way in Cage <laughs> the, the deliveries are honestly the, the best bit of the, the dialogue for, for Agrabah in Cage one It's uh, a fan favorite in our friend group. Especially and, for Dan. Oh yeah, <laughs> Dan out. loves him, shouts to Dan. <laughs> And so yeah, for, for this fight, Jafar is uh, mainly oh, yeah, more of a support boss, but he, um, <laughs> and uh, the idea is Dessa wants to get a full combo out on him before he teleports, and oh yeah, this, oh, this <laughs> blocks bug. And yeah, uh, Dessa is, uh, is manipulating his teleport based on where he's running. Depending on where you're positioned will decide where Jafar teleports, so Dessa is being very careful on where he moves. The blocks bug was more annoying than usual because uh, normally they're irrelevant in the fight, but yeah, Dessa lost a, like a, lost a, a cycle because of them, which is a bit devastating. I don't like my HP at all, so something we didn't really talk about, OC and Agrava, which is like part of the reason this is kind of difficult, we don't use care. Whatever health we lose, it's, it's like a Nuzlocke, it's gone. Yeah. So, especially on this fight, going in with, I think that's like 30% health, I will try and avoid getting defeated, but honestly, I am very much contemplating a death piece right here. Yeah. Depends on what part does I mean. Uh, I think you go for it. I think we have to go for it. So, this fight is Chi Jafar, uh, however, he is not our concern. It is Iago. Iago is holding the lamp, similar to the KH1 fight, where we have to chase Iago down and... Uh, free him of the lamp while Jinny Jafar is peppering us from the side. As Dessa mentioned, his HP is in a really dire spot. Mm -hmm. oh, you have them right behind you too. I yep. have them, yeah. Oh. Uh, oh. oh. That is, happens. Yeah, that happens. that's rough. It's fine. Yeah. Those are peppers. Oh, yeah, true, true. Calculate. Yeah. Calculate. Yeah. Uh, at, losing? Uh, <laughs> never. <laughs> never. It was the game's fault. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, as Dessa mentioned, no cure. The only healing he was going to be able to get was HP ups. Oh, nice. Okay, now the fight is kind of easy. Yeah. So that is a, a status orb that when hits you, you get uh, hit with that. The same debuff that we just gave Iago, which uh, even without the debuff, Dessa is able to time his combos very precisely to keep Iago basically stun locked. So good. That was a very, <laughs> a very, like, very nice fight. Redeemed the uh, the first one. Oh, wait, there. Definitely did. Mm hmm. And now we're on second phase where we now have blocks included. Iago's pathing, he likes to go onto these top blocks here. And, uh, oh, that was a good, uh, good dodge there. Dessa wants to basically do the same thing. And if he does get out, he will just go to the next corner. Hold on. I think that's a regular one. Fine. Oh, brick oh, wall. Oh! Very nice. Hey, that was really good. Usually, you like drop down at some point, but 
I was able to keep myself floor there. Very, very nice. That was a very, very clean. You know, I'm actually happy you died now because you were able to show up <laughs> that like really. That was a really crisp fight there. Not here was on purpose. Oh, 100 percent. You done me? Never, never. That was very. That was a pretty good uh, aggro, honestly. We we mentioned the RNG being a, a very bad factor. I think Dessa got about average on the RNG well, there. It was, was alright. Yeah, it was like a little worse than average. Mm -hmm. But it was alright. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, like this time I'll just uh, be quiet for a second because I messed it up practically. Yes. yes. So th this area is, uh, is is very different to what we have to deal with. If you know in 1FM we actually lose our Keyblade and we can give it a wooden sword. And we mainly rely on Beast in 1FM. But for here we don't get anything. We are... Uh, we're basically left to just our movement. For this menu, Dessa is actually unlocking the CP cheat device, where CP is the uh, the experience you get for the commands. And Dessa is sacrificing uh, all of his experience gain now, only getting one eighth of the original amount, but he's getting times four the CP experience, which is very huge because we want to set up our abilities in a certain way to get really good uh, a really good ability called Judgment Triad, which is. Uh, it's, it's the big boy. It's, like it's the, the bread, big one. butter, lettuce, mayo, everything. Yeah, the full breakfast of, of uh, Recoded. It's, it's the real deal. And Dessa wants to have two of those for the final fights. Hungry. Yeah, I know, right? I shouldn't have mentioned full <laughs> breakfast now. It's getting to me. It was really good, though. Yeah, oh, yeah. So this area, like I mentioned, is mainly focused on Sora's movement. Uh, this area just serves as like providing more puzzles for... Um, <clears throat> practicing your your movement, making sure you're still up to up to standard. So you're pretty sharp with it. This is going to do a cheeky air slide here, hey. and uh, to very nicely avoid that cycle. And yeah, yeah, you see air slide flourish in this world. Like yeah, it's really really useful, especially because now we're stripped off the our keyblade as mentioned. It's really really nice to see what you can even do with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's really uh, interesting air slide because it's. Um, when you have it, it may, it's like it's a great ability for sure. But if you are if you have really good lines and you're you're really good at just maneuvering Sora, which may sound a bit silly. Oh my god! Okay, well that, that's the importance <laughs> of it. <laughs> if you, if you know how to maneuver Sora really well, <coughs> I clearly don't. <laughs> Air slide becomes a very very important utility, and uh, yeah, it was, it was a bit unfortunate the timing on that. Commentators cast. Want to see what Koda looked like in the phone? Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, there it is. You actually have a secondary camera mode here if you press select, but instead of E, uh, the ego perspective you have in other games, this is like kind of the camera perspective they had in the phone game. Because you notice this is a recoded game, and it's still on a DS. That's because this is a remake, actually, of something that only released on Japanese flip phones. Because mm -hmm. I think the refrigerator and my bathtub are the only ones that don't have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it's it, it's crazy the the story of uh, of Code that honestly like it's uh, it's history is really interesting. And now we have uh, we have the, the king's captain Goofy on our Sword. team now, uh, our man, our king. So um, Dessa actually has his abilities set up in a very particular way. Dessa currently has two magic commands and two uh, physical commands. And uh, physical commands actually turn into Goofy commands when he's in your party, those being Goofy Turbo. Depending on how many and how strong the commands are, we'll decide how strong Goofy or uh, certain someone, which you might guess who we're getting later, is. I know who you're talking about. Oh, uh, oh, actually, I don't know either. I mean, we want that time, it's fine. He doesn't have Dark Goose, really. <laughs> So yeah, it's, it's again, it's really nice how it all works out because Dessa does, there he goes, oh man. Dessa has his abilities, like I mentioned, set up for Judgment Triad later and also has it set up nicely to get the most use out of Donald and Goofy. <coughs> Donald? Donald. Oh, wait, no, oh. Oh, the duck. <laughs> And uh, it's really cool how this uh, place works because uh, normally you have, um, like, you can command Goofy to do d uh, different things like focus uh, blocks, just run alongside you or focus heartless. And Dessa is going to be very specific with this movement to stand in positions and align himself in positions to allow Goofy to follow him and to target what he wants. This is uh, pretty important because Goofy does tend to get a bit lost and this area can be frustrating. 
if you don't know how to uh, influence Goofy. Wait. Oh, that's bad. You? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it, it can get pretty bad if Goofy just kind of wanders off and does his own thing. Mm. And you know, we we have no real say in it from our, from Sora. Like we we have to figure out what to do in both positioning and just the the mental of it. I mean, we, we literally tell him. Yeah. It even is. It's a speech bubble, right? Oh, true. Yeah. <laughs> we, we beg. Goofy, please turn around. <laughs> oh, just like one. Come on. Let me have it <laughs> for us. For your voice. Come on. Just do it. So something that's like kind of unique to the DS games, and I just recently figured that out, and it's a thing in days as well. If you air slide into walls, your party members actually teleport towards you, which you don't really notice much on Recode because it's the only part with uh, party members. But with uh, days, for example, where most of the game is played with like Shion or other characters following you. It's a really nice little tech that I just kind of found an accident because we had times where Goofy would just completely despawn in this section because he would go into invalid positions. And that means you have to reload the area, basically go out, go back in. Even if you're like halfway through it, there's no other way to remove that or to remedy that, basically. But it turns out that if you just air slide into walls, they for some reason just teleport or at very least walk towards you. I'll use that during later fights as well. So. Uh, <laughs> we just had a little bit of a brick wall instance. We have the brick wall on our Olympia Keyblade. We also have Donald and Goofy. Because mm -hmm. they might not look like it, but you might as well just put a building in front of us. It's like the same thing. You cannot move them a single pixel. And their hitboxes are not like their models. Their hitboxes are just rectangles. Yeah, and uh, and pretty much I think every other Kingdom Hearts game, you you are able to freely like push your party members. But in, in Recoded, yeah, they are built like brick houses. They they will not budge at all. So um, you gotta be very careful if you're going down these like narrow hallways, or you're like trying to to maneuver around. Because yeah, if they're if they're in a certain spot, you're just kind of like waiting for them to get out of the way. Mm. <laughs> and an uh, important uh, thing to note as well is Dessa had two Arogas on his uh, command menu, which gave Donald Thundaga. Uh, something to, to note, as we mentioned before, is um, it, they have specific tiers on how strong they are. Uh, for right now, they're both on tier 1 in terms of strength, but Dessa... Oh, Donald's tier 2, sorry. Right. Donald is tier 2 right now. And uh, thanks to that, he, he has a Oh right, he has an improvement to his thunder. And Dessa actually is going to attempt to uh, constantly use a, a glitch called Double Thunder Glitch. Where Donald will uh, sometimes jump up to attack enemies. And if you're able to get a thunder out while he's in the air, the game... I, I don't know the specifics behind it, Dessa, if you want to uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But the, the game will just double input a thunder because it, it assumes... Uh oh. Ah, oh, no swear, no swear. The game will um, use the thunder twice, basically, because it, it like it misreads when he should be using it. Uh, specifics are press button, enemy gone. <laughs> press I, press I button, lo lo it's lots of thunder. Just if he's airborne for some reason, they don't like he's able to just utilize it twice. It even it doesn't even use up a second charge. Really, really, really nice. I think I'm just gonna array this on. I should have done it a little bit. But I'm just gonna. Uh, yes. So uh, with every Keyblade, there's a um, there's a unique overclock ability or finisher. And for Donald and Goofy, we have Spin Array. Spin Array is uh, actually a really nice uh, finisher in terms of utility and damage. Um, if Dessa just uses it and does one uh, correct like check, oh no! If he does one correct check, it clears all the blocks around it pretty much instantly, which is great for just for clearing the path. And for full damage, when you do all 15, it does a massive AOE attack, which is actually very strong and helps clear a lot of uh, a lot of enemies. You will be seeing a lot of use for its damage very soon as well. Once we get to uh, another famous uh, section in one of them too, the uh, the elevator. I'm glad I'm already on the block, so I didn't have to use the spinner ray, spinner ray to get rid of him. Because it does take a little bit to like wind up, mash all things. Because you can also just like mash through it. The time at the top also decreases whenever you have a wrong input. Mm -hmm. All right, now the elevator. This is kind of like a time fight. Like there's a certain amount of time you have to spend in this fight, 
but if you spend too long, you start to lose time. I don't know how much time it is exactly, but basically, like, one elevator, right? If you go around the full time and you still haven't finished the fight, which you usually haven't because it's not, like, a quick fight, it usually means that you will start with a bit of time. You just hope it's not going to be as much. And yeah, as you can see, uh, Dessa has uh, pivoted really hard into allowing Donald to have as much done as possible, which, uh, again, completely enough, uh, leads into the builds that he wants for the end game for his judgment triad. So, uh, like, this, the route itself glues together very nicely. There's very good synergy in regards to setting this up and still not having to reassemble some things later. Ooh, oh. oh, there we go. Okay, these defenders, uh, if you know them in, in one of them, you know that it's just like a, a no-go zone if you're in front of them. And Donald included, if Donald is in front of the defender, even though the thunder is coming down from above, it will take Donald's hitbox as like the decider on where that attack is hitting. So if Donald is placed in front of the defender, all of that thunder will be parried by the... Uh, oh my god. That was <laughs> yeah, this game is also not able to render everything sometimes. Oh, he parried. Wow. These wyverns are infamous of avoiding the, the spinner ray finisher. We had a couple of those. Uh, You'd think the guys with the shield would do that, but. I know, right? The, bird, <laughs> the, the, bird. the guys who are placed directly in front of it are like, I'm, 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 not, I'm not getting hit by this. So, yeah, Dessa is actually going to sell a lot of his not needed uh, commands, and you saw him kind of go out of his way throughout Hollow Bastion to pick up a lot of money. He's actually going to. Uh, sell pretty much as much as you can and buy muscle strike which is a twelve thousand money so not a cheap buy and then he's going to use the remainder for high ethers we didn't mention what ethers do but basically ethers will increase your overclock level uh, basically instantly a normal ether increases your overclock level by one and high ether by two this is really important for setups later in the fight or later in the run pardon for fights that uh, are really tight and very cycle based so, uh, the, the shop routing there is... Hello? Um, oh, okay. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the game had to take a moment to figure out what, what you wanted to do there. That was, a, that was terrifying. Like, just hearing the music just cut like that. Was <laughs> I mean, it knew it didn't break or anything, but like, it just went... <laughs> we didn't even have music anymore. It just went to full stop. Jesus. All right. We're approaching another system sector, which elements don't really change too much. We just have Donald and Goofy around. They're both randomized, except for, again, the wages that we have. So, yeah, if we have anything, now's a good time. We have got $5 from Mickey, who says, I seem to have lost my shirt. Dessa, can you explain how? And those $5 are going to the Fort Boyard heroic mode. 0 0.2. Someone got hit by the attack. Oh, <laughs> I was slanking that. <laughs> uh, oh, yes. Better get done with some material. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the, the good gimmick of this uh, system sector is that the Donald Goofy follows us inside. And, um, yeah, th this is where the, the blocks bugs actually become more prominent in the system sectors. And this is where the blocks bugs that uh, keep us up at night uh, are bound. Uh, yeah, there we are. So Dessa actually wanted to delay his spinner array, waiting for all the cubes to spawn um, in that middle part there. There was a shadow still alive, so he was letting it cycle around a few times just to get that damage off. Oh, and... Oh, uh, well, you uh, would think that would be the strategy, but I just... <laughs> oh, oh, I was, I was just, giving you a credit back. <laughs> no, I, I just got the time wrong, like, horribly. No. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no, my friend. Okay, no. well, at least oh, it's the short room. <laughs> okay, th there was so much to unpack there. Oh, so, uh, there e e oh, exit point was very far away, and we got um, approached by the Eliminator. The Eliminator is a reskinned defender, but he is a terrifying enemy to go I against. I mean, one would hope of that name. Oh yeah, the, the, the name itself is enough to strike fear. Uh, it is a extremely powerful enemy, capable of one-shotting Dessa right now, and is very quick, it will just follow you. Once it's spawned, it will just follow you to the end of the earth. So, yeah, very scary enemy. You, they, you, in, a, in a run, you, you don't even want to look at him, you just want to get out as fast as you can. And if you are unfortunate enough to have him spawn in very narrow rooms, you are going to have a hard time. It is very tricky to kind of get away from them, especially in the later rooms. Oh, it's chugging. Hey, at least you can help. This is how slow the game can go. Yeah, at least you can time these, right? 
There we go. Most people get more wrong on purpose. <laughs> All right. Oh wait, there's another. Right. Didn't even look at the map up. Oh, I know which one. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that, that's uh, still the the room outline itself shows you what is going like the contents of the room and Dessa is so well versed in this game that he's able to see the outline of the room and know what oh my god a tale as old as time eh my god <laughs> and again and again <laughs> this is actually pretty bad because Dessa needs to menu <laughs> but he's gonna be here as well Oh? oh, no, no, no. Okay. Oh, well, oh, I moved into shadow. What? The Whatever. Sh the shadow stood I'll do up later. in this place. I'll do later. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that, the, the, it's good. <laughs> that was so, uh, like, comedic how that all worked out. How two, <laughs> two floors in a row, you get further spawn and eliminate us. <laughs> Jeez, man. My God. Yeah, funny, huh? <laughs> <laughs> LOL, that was a good one. Oh, so, thanks, the game. bad part is that usually if you leave system sectors, their commands automatically recharge. The pro ah, I should have moved that first. Um, now I have to basically run away from the enemies. Wait here. I'm not gonna wait to recharge. So, I'll just finalize our build. I'll be combining a Roga and Paraga, which I've been building up basically, and combining with the Muscle Strike from earlier to get Judgment Triad. That's there exactly what we want to be at, because Judgment Triad is broken. Like, it's not like broken as elements of other games are. It's not like a one-hit clear move, because there's still like the memory cost to it. There's um, the cooldown and all that, it's like the most balanced overpowered move. It, yeah. It's like, I would say it's pretty good. Yeah. And but there is no other reason to end it. Right. And out the box, Judgment Triad is like good, but like not incredible. But with the build we've been working towards, Judgment Triad actually becomes very strong. And uh, we'll be able to see it in action on this fight. Pete is a really interesting fight. Uh, this is where the fights start to become very technical, and Deso actually wants to be very careful with how he does his combos. So Pete has a uh, like a stagger value, and Dessa does not want to stagger him that much. Uh, about five staggers is the limit, <gasps> or four staggers, including that ball. On the fifth stagger, he'll get uh, like brick, the brick wall ability and uh, teleport away. And uh, it can be problematic, especially in later phases, if he does get some actions out. Thankfully, in this first phase, we're able to start to keep him nice and loot, which is pretty good. But yeah, this is where his uh, his DM or desperation move comes in, where he becomes his ball of lightning and follows you and strikes uh, lightning down. It's very likely we will see this move again. I know there is like potential to one cycle, but it's like, an extremely demanding thing. It's very unlikely to get it just willy nilly. And yeah, Des is being very careful with timing his inputs. You can you can stagger him out of those punches. If you don't, he'll just do a big grand slam attack and then teleport away. So it's good catch. That's also uh, if he is like a good bit away, he wants to close the distance thanks to Olympia, and uh, try and keep him as much as he can. Ah, there we go. Oh yeah, there it is. Unfortunate to not get the uh, like the initial hit that stagger might have, might have helped out. But I think he would have still gone into that action. I still haven't figured out what it what it is, but it's probably some kind of action count similar to like Cage Two has that system, a very prevalent system, very important system, and oftentimes overlooked because it's just not an obvious. Right. And now we have Riku. Did we see that guy like one and a half hours ago in Pokemon Coliseum? We did! <laughs> the, the, we made a mention of it, we had a good giggle about it. The second last trainer in Pokemon Coliseum was almost identical to, <laughs> to, to Riku, his uh, like, heartless outfit. It was crazy, the similarities. We had to double take it and like, wait a minute. That's <laughs> You're cage in Pokemon? <laughs> I know what cage forwards we're getting. Oh, I know, right? It's crazy. We're Pokemon in cage? Imagine. Oh. So yeah, for this fight, Dessa, once again, having to be very technical. Dessa is going to do uh, a full combo on the ground and then jump. After that full combo on the ground for three staggers, Riku will then go into a move. He can either shield or swing. Shield is pretty rough because you're unable to swing from above him. You have to get around behind him. And uh, you want to see him swing because you can get some hits in from the top. 
Dessa also wants to be very careful on when he uses his Judgment Triad, because if he... Uh, it's a multi-hit move, because you send three uh, Keyblades, like spinning Keyblades, and if you stagger him twice and then Judgment Triad, only one of them is going to hit him, and he's going to parry or block the other two. So it's a very technical fight, and Des is going to be very careful with his Judgment Triad. So it's, it's not just use it when you have it. It's, it's very particular with how it has to be used. Hey! I didn't even see him pull up the wall. I just decide it's time to counter. <laughs> uh, uh, oh. So this is one of the, the things with Brick uh, Wall. Oh, I feel like... Yeah, we're good. There we go. Uh, a, a bit dicey, but now we're, we're at that part of the run now where Judgment Triads, once we have them, we are able to have some utility spells on the side. Magnera and Cura being one of them is, uh, is a very, very good uh, good spell to have on you, even at uh, the highest level. And yeah, this is the the Phase 3 DM, a very easy job, uh, dodge from Dessa. That was very well done. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no, oh no, that's... No, that was wow. a waste to try. He I, I should have anticipated this because he was kind of building up. If he's idle and basically doesn't get to do anything for a little bit, he tends to jump away. Like if you play passively, he tries to close the distance that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a... Uh, so it's, it's rough having to watch out for your attacks because even with the cure, you can't play super aggressive because of the cooldown for the spell. So Dessa still has to be very careful uh, not to get caught out by one too many things or just to kind of do it. Yeah, to have this happen where it just it Riku's destroying us all. Oh, I'm dodging it. Yeah. Well, because if you get caught in the crosshair of that, you usually get stun lock and it. It's like, especially if the health from Edu would just end the fight and you would have to redo this phase. Luckily, you don't get thrown back like all the phases, you just have to redo that specific, fa specific phase that you're on. Yeah, that was kind of slow fight. You want to see sub 4. Mm -hmm. It didn't really go that well, but it's alright. Yeah, a bit unfortunate. Riku was very uh, DM happy there, but Dessa still played it very well. If he was any more aggressive, I feel like we would have seen a death. So Dessa played Perfect. that as, as well as he could have, for sure. So. This is where uh, the, the mechanics kind of get flipped around and things get changed quite a bit. So we're at the part of the game now where we, we have to travel, we have to revisit the revisits of the revisits and uh, get our matrix power back. Basically Sora has been weakened and we are reduced back to level 1 stats. We have all our abilities and all our like keyblades and stuff but our stats have just been reduced by a lot. And we just have to jump from world to world picking up uh, little blue balls which will gradually give us our stats back. We have to make sure that we're very particular about how many we get. We try to be within a certain window for, for fights later because for every revisit we have, we have a system sector and uh, we have a blocks, uh, blocks bug at the end waiting for us every time. So Dessa wants to be sure that he is uh, <laughs> he's very well prepared. Oh, oh very nice spawn. Yeah. Very nice. And yeah, as we progress, we want to pick up about 10% per world, 15 on a, a few of them. But yeah, this is going to be where things are a bit dicey because yeah, we're not as tanky. We, we lose a lot of health and a lot of strength. Right here. All right, so we also unlock Dodger level two, which in this game, Dodger level two is actually really cool because it A, gives you more iframes like way more iframes, which iframes are your invincibility frames used to dodge attacks in most action games. <coughs> but it also speed up the dodge. Rate. You can chain them way quicker, and the distance you get is way more. It's really cool. It's like a really cool take on the dodge rocker. You would think maybe it just like makes it more efficient, but no, you just get to travel faster for which is really really good. Yeah, another thing too is people might disregard dodge roll once they get air slide. But it's, it's, it's very important not to sleep on dodge roll. Something else uh, that Dessa got too is he actually got a new keyblade called Oblivion. Oblivion is a very, very good keyblade, especially for these endgame fights. Basically given to you for the use of one-on-one -on -one fights. Oblivion has two No way. Okay, I yeah, saw him in action a little bit. He wanted to spawn on screen as well, wanted to show his face a little bit. Yeah, we ain't having that. He is not showing his face at this marathon, no sir. No, no, please not. So yeah, Oblivion is, uh, is a very good Keyblade and we get two abilities from them. Uh, at level one, we get Attack Haste, which is just a very, very nice thing to have very early in the Keyblade's uh, overclock uh, progression. 
and Two-Edged Blade at level 3. Two-Edged Blade basically increases the damage you deal, however, uh, chips away your health bit by bit as you swing. Something to note as well is Dessa actually took off one of his Judgment Earth Triads for Wind Tracer, uh, which is uh, maybe we were talking about Wind, uh, Judgment Triad giving it a lot of praise to then have it switched out. Is It may seem a bit weird, but Wind Tracer is actually an incredible ability for these uh, core blocks for that reason right there. That's a beautiful use of Wind Tracer. A little delete button for the Yeah, but if you time it right, it's beautiful. And also, because Jetro oh, yes. usually doesn't get the job done, but as you saw, it can happen if you get a little bit lucky with how the hitboxes hit boxes do it. Because they can, like, dissipate early on and suddenly, like, not hit the enemy. I don't know exactly why it happens, but it's also just inconsistent because it arcs around, it flies around a little bit, and you can't target the blocks themselves. <coughs> Wind Tracer is just the hitbox that lingers, exactly, and just keeps dealing. Miniscule damage, but it's enough to get the job done because we just need one hit. Right. It, it, it's um, it's really cool that some uh, abilities which would not really find that much use elsewhere, they have their uses in in certain places. The Blizzard for for oh, that yeah, and fine. the Wind Tracer. Because uh, if it wasn't used for the, the the core blocks, I don't know what other use they would have. So it's a really nice. Uh, it's really nice to have the variety there and to be able to just use different different types of abilities, not just for like damage, but for a utility as well. <laughs> okay, so I I looked away at my notes, but did uh did the fiend spawn yet, or did I miss it? Oh no, As he's gonna point. be right here. There he is. Okay. Let's let's break this down. So danger bugs are, I mean, the name fits. They they are a danger to society. They're a danger to everyone, and uh, they have the exact same properties as a danger block. Uh oh. <laughs> I, I was like, oh yo, that actually was like really good the way I handled it. And nope. <laughs> it's always when you're like, oh, that was actually good, and everything crumbles. So yeah, the danger uh, bugs, they have the exact same properties as the danger block, but they move. And they attack as well. <laughs> and it's really awful because a lot of the combos in this game have been... Well, a lot of the combat in this game has been combos and string things together. You cannot do that against the danger block. Like, you you are, like, at the mercy. If You have to have your commands at the ready. Or you are just going to have to prepare for the worst time of your life. <laughs> it's, it's so awful to fight them, especially in groups. And for this menu, Dessa is using all of his uh, basically blank chips to uh, connect to the more linear abilities on the side and replacing his useful chips in between the CPUs because we didn't mention this before. When uh -huh. you connect the CPUs together, the little green boxes with the lightning in the middle, all the chips that you used in between those CPUs in the connecting wire have their effects doubled. So what level uh, one level up goes to two level up, strength up gets doubled, defense up, or whatever you use in there gets doubled. So Dessa makes sure to stack level up chips, strength up chips, and luck chips. Uh, I think Dessa mentioned this earlier in the run, but I'll, I'll mention it just in case the new people of the stream or if it was missed. But luck is the stat used to determine if your finishers deal crit hits. Actually, regular hits crit as well. Oh, regular, but that's oh, like just in this game. Oh, okay, pardon fine. me then. So yes, the, the luck stat decides uh, if your hit is a critical hit, which is signaled by like a big spread of white like beams off the enemy and massive damage, which uh, is very important because the, the damage difference between getting a crit and not getting a crit is kind of huge. It is very strong. And when you get a full combo of crits, you see the value. I was about to say, I didn't even see that like on the screen. It's like, it just, just disappeared. Well, I saw him, but they're like this. So, the Traverse Town sector is bad, like in every computer boat. Yeah. Because it's, oh, there you go. That's oh, one yeah. of them. So, Traverse Town, the developers had a little fun here and put the worst potential rooms into this system sector. Like, pretty much all the layouts you can see are kind of bad. And the rooms themselves are pretty bad as well. Like this room, no matter what the layout is, it's always uh, uh, be be the careful as well. Yeah, there you go, nice. And yeah, that's, Redesign, that's, that's, that'd be crazy. Yeah, oh, as Dessa mentioned as well, uh, like it, this is a very, 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 very rough system sector. This is the part of the game. <laughs> this is the part of the game where the the rooms themselves 
are notorious and they, they really like go out of their way to try and mess with you. Like you see how big oh, these uh, these like high pillars are. The ladder is actually sometimes just like differently placed in a lot of the rooms. And it just doesn't exist and you have to find other ways to get out. Yeah, true, something like that too. And it is awful depending on what room oh and it was all this time. Got to yep. cross the entire thing again. And if we're looking forward to the next floor. If history repeats itself, we'll be seeing the uh, the eliminator as well. Okay. Are you? At the very least. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> yeah, the, these rooms are awful, and it's uh, even for Dessa. No. But it was that. No. <laughs> They're all along. How does he know? How does he know? Uh, I have to wait a little. This is. Oh my oh, God. Where? Let me get up there. Jesus. Wait. Okay. Bro. Why are you worried? I wasn't worried. I, I, mean, yeah, I wasn't worried. I, 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 are you worried? It was for dramatic effect. I, I wasn't worried. And we got a string. So, I mean, I feel like we've been throwing the word off around a lot. It, this is still like a super fun game to speedrun. It's just like there are just little bits of RNG here and there that make it a little bit inconvenient in some cases. But it's really, it mainly really matters if you're going for like pop times. But the most way you can manage with getting real bad, real bad luck is what I'm gonna call it right now in these systems. It's really not, not bad. Yeah. Of exaggerating, of course, a little bit for the effect to at least get the point across that it's not what we want to see. Right. And yeah, as uh, as Dessa mentioned, although we, we joke and we ha we have laughs, this game is actually very very nice for um, early and mid level runners because, as Dessa mentioned before, the variety and the backups that you have throughout the run and the creativity that you have with uh, with a lot of the route, it's very, very nice and very forgiving for a lot of new runners. If you're going for a top time, that's where things get a bit dicey, but... Uh, I mean, that's with, like, most games. Even Mario 64, you have uh, RNG sectors in there where you just have to hope that it works, otherwise I'm here and there. Yeah. Points, points and all that. Hey, yo! Okay, you know what? A lot better. There's, we're not going from uh, Jason? floor one to floor five again. This time. Okay. Actually. See, this is important. Dessa does want to menu before every floor three because he wants to have Win Tracer early. That is also the problem with getting the uh, the uh, Eliminator is even though he might not be a scary thing, you can just get out of the way. He does block us from menuing. Mm. So if he does <coughs> spawn and he is following us relentlessly, we can't menu. And with the timing with how all this works is we want to have Wind Tracer at the ready when uh, we're fighting uh, Core Blocks. And as you see, we are perfectly at the ready. So the moment he lands oh, yes. and conjoins, we're able to, to do some do some really good damage. Oh, wait. This is a... Oh my god, I wait for 50%! Come on! No. Yeah, this is uh, awful. Like, it's like, oh, it's so like, bad. Like yeah, that. there you yeah. go. I'll play Snake. There we go. There we go. That, like, that is a perfect example of a value. I'll create a more friends here. Oh. oh. Never mind. That, that, that's a, a perfect example for the, the value of Wind Tracer. Like, 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 again, it's, it's so good to be able to just stop core blocks in his tracks. Again, like, we're going to see it. it look, it's, it's incredible how good it is. It's amazing. It, Judgment Triad, although it's a very strong ability, it doesn't come close to the utility. But this, that uh, finisher would have made me miss the challenge. I would have not been happy because I just emptied one of the last ones and I had one more hip left that I could have missed. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Now we got one land, which is like pretty quick and like nothing really special. I just collect a lot of <clears throat> matrix power points and then enter another sector, which the sector in itself is dangerous. Yeah. Like it, we have potentially lots of danger blocks running around and we even want to go for the high ether here which as logic mentioned it increases our clock gauge so it basically gives us a little head start we can start with the gauge plate at the ready because we want to make sure that we are able to dispose of those danger blocks as quickly as possible and i guess while i'm collecting all these orbs we have some time for donation we have a 50 dollars donation from thar Yo, let's get it, Dessa. I'm glad this run is still at a reasonable hour for me to watch in the US. Shout out to you and Logic on comms, as well as Yida as Dan in the audience. Yes, thank you, Thar. And the do. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> thank you, Thar. Very generous of you, man. Thank you very much. Also, like, <clears throat> a very big 
part of the community as well, more so on the marathon side. Even he was, I think, wasn't he part of Casa of kind of organizing the route as well? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, Th Th Thar has okay, been yeah. a, a crucial backbone in a lot of uh, a lot of marathons and a lot of like fun events that have been set up in the KH community and other communities alike. So Thar is the MVP. Honestly, he is uh, an amazing guy. All right, I. You know, what, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of happy that the, that wall's there. I, I don't want to play. <laughs> I, I didn't want to see it. Yeah. So this I is what, this is where the rooms get weird. Where again, this room had no ladder, so it does have to improvise. Oh, it does. Oh, it does. Sorry about that. Well, I was sure about that either. Okay. <laughs> oh, yep. Like, like close quarters where the danger bug is. Um, oh, he's doing the, the janky. Oh yeah. Come on. Okay. Okay, there we go. Jeez. There are two more. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's a metal block. That's nice. I shouldn't have used the five, but there could be another one here. Okay, where is he? He might be. Oh, there, another metal. Okay. okay, we are. I've been getting really lucky with this recently. They were not too bad, and this. Oh, and this. Oh, there's a shadow. I'm just gonna menu next. <coughs> there was a shadow, so the exit is right. Here. Pretty nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, finish command, there we go. Oh yes, please, use the finish command. <laughs> I, I, did, I did forget it, but it wasn't here, it was in Hollow Bastion. Oh right, sorry, yes. That's fine, well, I still I, I forgot it too, it. yeah, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> this one, I don't really, really think about it. I just use it because it's on my A button. Yeah. Uh, a, a little... A little lift? Oh, so something comedic as well is um, all the blocks are scattered across the arena as metal blocks and they turn into the core blocks. And if you stand on the core block itself, you're actually able to be lifted up as it goes up. And it's very, it's comedic and also kind of has its use if um, in an arena like this you are unable to access the top, you're able to get onto the top uh, like that. And yeah, when we mentioned about, yeah, when we mentioned about floors just being like made against you, this is one of them, where Core Blocks loves to travel to the very top and you have no access to the top. And you're at the mercy of him coming down, and as Dessa mentioned, there, there have been times where no. he, he just went out of bounds. <laughs> so, it's, uh, yeah, look at him go. Come back! It's, uh, it's rough. It's not uh, great. Oh, oh, I thought he okay, met Yeah, that was, oh man, so on the wound it would have been. This, oh, yo, crit, nice. Okay, that was very nice. That was all right. That, that was, was good. A little worse. The that that is a perfect example of the the value we get from crits, which is why Dessa pivoted so hard for for luck chips. It really no, it, it makes the world of a difference for tight situations like that. Because if we didn't get those crits, we definitely would have seen another cycle. Mm -hmm. And now we have the aggravated revisit of the revisit of the revisit of the. <laughs> We're here a lot. We are here a lot. I will yep. say. Uh, yeah, just collecting more matrix power, having a few walls to blow up, and hoping that we don't get bullied by a danger bug. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, if we have anything more, now would be a good time. Did you know that we've got a prize shirt that you can get just for the, like, the duration no. of this event? So you can get it online at speedrun.score. You can get it here live at the event if you are. It is $22 per shirt, and depending on your shipping, um, it could be more around. But $8 of every single shirt that is sold is going directly to Alzheimer Fondom, and we'll be putting that in towards the end of the marathon. You can only get this shirt during the event, so make sure you get one now, because this event is ending in like a day's time. And you can find out more by typing exclamation mark merch in chat. Really is ending tomorrow, huh? Mm -hmm. It's been a really good week. We got great ones, runs. We had fifty-three thousand eight hundred ninety-four. Yes, crazy a numbers. Crazy man. This ESA has been stacked. We have had a lot of fun watching uh, uh, new friends and old friends, you know, bring their games to the table and just see how well some speedruns are and just how unique the speedrunning world is. It's honestly incredible. Like the FF14 run, for example, that one was pretty fun to watch. Oh yes. The the FF runs have been uh, pretty fun, honestly. How many FF runs can we fit in this marathon? <laughs> Not enough. We need more. Gonna go. Ah, let's do it. Ooh, okay. So okay. this room we can tackle in different ways. It's a little scary because we basically just have 30 basic enemies to fight. But with two edge plate, it is as the name suggests, a two edge plate. The more you hit, the more damage you take. The damage cannot defeat you. But it can put me into dangerous spots, like right here. 
So what you can either choose to go double cure and magnera for this fight or double magnera and a cure. Which at that point you kind of have to that, use the Magnera as a substitute for Cure, as in just delay the enemies a little from approaching you, from attacking you. Or, oh wow, that arc perfectly. Or just like make use of the special blocks that are around to collect the prizes, collect the HP ups, uh, the HP orbs. Just to make sure that you don't fall to the... Like that, oh. like exactly that. Just so that doesn't happen. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's really tough The because we love the aggression. We, we want to see this amount of DPS. But yeah, as Dessa mentioned, it's very scary because th this room, as Dessa mentioned in particular, is stacked with a lot of enemies. So you, you are at the risk of just like, in, in a moment of like uh, inaction, you just can't do anything. You're just going to get caught out off screen. So Dessa has to be very careful with balancing uh, his health with two edge blades. And in that instance, I don't even blame him for going for that combo because his health looked decent. It's just about how how much, how many times he hit a block in the magnet to then fall into an attack is like really unfortunate. Honestly, it's one of those that you either have to play it super safe or you have you like you just go for it. Playing it just naturally, just a little safe, can sometimes be problematic if you're letting them run around a little bit more than they should. I was almost sure that it went double kill this time, but I guess not. Oh, even sketchier. Let's, let's go for it. You are in the thick of it right now, Mike. Don't worry about it. Ooh. Don't worry about it. <laughs> You're still going. <laughs> Don't worry about it. There we go. Jeez. Have you seen me die this run? Uh, no. I, I actually not boss. I Okay. <laughs> Okay. I'd answer. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, again, this is uh, this is doing very well here. He's picking his fights well. He's making sure to wait a little bit as well, because he doesn't want to get caught out with no commands to his name. Because if he's in the thick of everything without any commands, he's just asking for trouble. And this, yeah, that that blocks much to not want to budge. Just generally, like kind of nothing very good at McNair. Yeah. Nothing happened. Yeah, this discretion is nice. Oh, okay, we lost to Edge Blade, which might be a benefit at this point of the fight. Okay. Oh! Okay. I heard him coming in. Okay, very nice. Okay. He's doing we very well. We only have five more. Yeah. You can see the uh, enemies defeated on the uh, in the bottom screen next to the, the floors. It's uh, yeah, it's a, a lot of enemies. Yeah. I'm gonna try and keep a Magnera and a Judgment Trap for the next floor because the next floor it doesn't have nearly as many enemies, but big enemies are big trouble usually. Right. Especially if it's air soldiers who are already notorious for just loving to. Be a little bit too invested in the fighting. Yeah, they get, they get a little too into it. Uh, this is um, it's very. We only have a few enemies in the run that have the green uh, buff, but uh, they they chose just like the most problematic ones to get their green buff, I think. And yeah, as I mentioned, these air soldiers are very aggressive. Get over here. Uh, he's in his rebellious heels, you see. He wasn't rebellious. His his block was. <laughs> I don't blame Dessa at all for taking his time with this because if Dessa does get too aggressive, then yeah, that, that's nice. He, he also wanted to be careful because he does want the SP from this floor, and the challenge for this was 60 seconds. So, although he did play it safe, he chose the right time to be aggressive because if he wasn't, it would have been would have been bad news. Oh, there we go. I was wondering why is my menu so? Mm, imagine just losing a cure. That would be pretty rough, to be honest. I would want to go in with a few cures on this last one. Yeah. So there's a, a lot of melt blocks because there's three core blocks to worry about now. This has the potential to be really good and really bad. If we just see one lava block change. If we see one block change and they're all together and the lava block goes off, it's going to be amazing for us. But yeah, normally Desert just has to deal with them one at a time. Just hope for no problematic box changes. Yeah, this is like this one gets bad as well, and they're just 
Ah, uh, you like this. Chime in. I'm gonna be left out. Yeah. It's getting fun, though. It's a shame. Uh, uh. Uh oh. Hey. Oh, my God. Wow. And yeah, this is just a weird one because they, they overlap with each other. And if they want to, they can just choose to vibe and not do anything. Or they can choose to, all of them, just like fly at you at once. Are you and, yeah, th this is a very scary point because Desi just does not have any commands available. Okay, that's okay, that's okay. I could kill them beforehand. Any crits? Seems lost awesome a bit. Yeah. It, it harps on the point again at how important crits are in the run because you might know, like, Desa's really struggling to get some damage out, but it's, uh,. It's just like uh, to the fault of the, not the fault, but just like the randomness of the game to give out those crits. We try and pivot as best we can, but yeah, as you can see, not getting them is really rough. It really extends the fight more than it uh, should be. Alright, now. Okay. Now. And. Any minute now. Maybe it's gonna happen. Any minute. Come on. Come on. Come on. Go on for Death Star. Amazing win tracer, by the way. Maybe? You guys are not seeing crits. Yeah, I mean, it might be nice, you know. You know, maybe, you know, just last combo, maybe. Oh, there, okay, there we there go. There we are, all right. <laughs> so, the last hit. Yep. So, this might look a little funny now. I will be menuing twice, but usually you want to, of course, try and avoid menuing unnecessary amount of times. But in this case, I want to menu because. Going out of the system sector, <clears throat> immediately recharges your command. So I want my judgment tries to be ready for what's upcoming. But at the same time, I also have chips that I get here. A level up chip that I'll be getting from getting the XP in this system sector. As well as the strength plus two that I just obtained. And I will put all of these chips to good use. Because that's the last time we will mess around with the stat matrix. Right. Right. Yeah, as, as we mentioned, uh, here is a perfect example of it where Des is going to put the chips in. There's going to be a little animation to show that the CPUs have been connected and now all the chips in the middle have been uh, have been doubled, tied. <laughs> <laughs> and we are still in the uh, in the debuff area with the Matrix power, so we're not able to see our stats actually increase, but we get a hefty buff from the CPU connection. And now we do the, the revisit fight. From, of the revisit of the revisit. There we go. Uh, Riku starts in phase three, and uh, it's a very similar fight, pretty much uh, one to one, about how you'd want to handle it. The nice thing about this is we have pretty much our full build at this point. Uh, the stat reduction kind of sucks, but we're still able to to make uh, good work of him. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I knew. So, yeah, this is kind of like the amount of damage we're dealing for the rest of the run. If we get into critical health, we can deal a little bit more, but <coughs> like in gen, like most of the time, this is about the extent of, as of, like how high our power level will be. Right. And I, I think, uh, again, we might have mentioned it, but it slips my mind. But the, the reason why we want to try and be low health for that little bit of damage buff is because of an accessory we got on Destiny Island, like right at the beginning of the run. Which uh, we've, we've used quite a bit, but uh, I, yeah, I think I might have slipped my mind on when we got it, so it's just a, just a note. Right, now the last side scroller for now. Oh, well, not for now, for this run where we. Oops. Uh, oh, uh oh. It's not luck. Am I? No, I'm not. Like, okay, so this is not an auto scroller at all. There's only one part that could be an auto scroll if you're not skipping it, which I'm gonna try and do. You saw me fire lunging a lot at the start, just to get a lot of horizontal distance. <coughs> and now I'm carrying my wind spin all the way to the end of this, because there's gonna be a big vertical section. I mentioned how the progression bar at the bottom only highlights the, well, horizontal progression, but the vertical progression is not listed there at all. So you're basically hitting the end of it and like, okay, where do I go now? And the only way to continue is going up. You would have to follow uh, a assortment of blocks that just goes around your snake pattern, or you hop a little bit. Oh, the, 
We can get a little bit higher usually, but yeah. around six minutes is where we want to be. That, that was very nice. It is very, very nice how, how much you can skip from that, because that always scroller segment is rough. It's, it's a good bit of time. Air slide is another thing that makes it... Yeah. Yes. Before, air slide was miserable. Right. We lost so much time in it. So, for Dragon uh, Mel, again, a, a 1FM favorite, uh, it is also based on hits for uh, how she staggers. When she's on her feet, you want to deal six hits to uh, bring her down to have her head be vulnerable. And then you want to do uh, a full combo with two finishes at the end to then stagger her fully. Uh, Dessa also wants to be very careful because he wants to make sure those finishes connect. Because that's where the damage is, is uh, if you hit those crits. That was very nice. Like You see me going for empty hits as well to make sure that my regular hits don't connect. Just to get as many finishes in as possible because six hits is, as mentioned earlier. Right. I guess, like, hit counter, hit you guess. Mm -hmm. And this is where we really want to see the crits come in because, like, we, we really want to... The more crits we get, the more cycles we skip, basically. And like, we really want to be seeing a lot of it. Dessa, this run, has had a pretty unfortunate crit RNG, but he's, he's been still looping bosses very well. So things have not been problematic. That was a juicy one there. <coughs> very nice. All right. Oh, we're done with Dragon Mail. Mm -hmm. And following that is basically the last time we have a proper gimmick, similar to what we have had in the Keyholds, for example. So, yep. Back to the mashing stance. A position assembled. Because <laughs> now we're approaching the rail shooter of this world. And this is where you probably see the frame drops the most. Back then, they were a little bit weaker as well, so enemies took two shots. And the more is on screen, the harder it gets for the console, of course, to render all of it and uh, drop strings. Mm -hmm. So being able to one-shot these enemies, actually, like, even though it doesn't actually speed up these waves, it just allows us to shoot less and have less stuff going on. Right. <coughs> uh, something to note as well, we are past the, uh, the debuff. Uh, area for Matrix Power. So Desto, uh, Desto wants to keep an eye out for his specific stats to know if he's at the correct uh, the correct numbers. Sometimes... Wait, no, mine are not getting one shot. What did I miss? Uh oh. oh. I know exactly what I missed. Oh. I'll show it up. Okay. So yeah, th 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 this is one of the points in particular where Desto want wanted to be very particular about how he sets up his chips with having them connected to the CPUs and doubled and having the lesser used one, uh, lesser the important ones be used for linear out the way abilities. Um, yeah, as you can see, it, it's kind of, it makes a big difference. Like, just the single hit makes things just go a lot faster. As Dessa mentioned, it's a <laughs> <laughs> it, it, is, it is problematic when, uh, as Dessa mentioned, the game will lag if they're on the screen and you need to get a whole extra shot out. Thankfully, Desha is a very good masher, so uh, the, the enemies will fall still pretty quickly, but <coughs> yeah, it's not as quick as uh, as we would like, especially for the bulkier enemies, that, that damage, like missing damage does add up. I forgot to get the speedrun chips. Oh, the rewards for it. right. Yes. So we mentioned earlier in the run that speedrun chips are given when you beat worlds uh, quickly which are basically redirect, uh, decorated level ups, uh, level up ships, and yeah, we, uh, we forgot to, to pick it up. That shouldn't hopefully be too problematic. We, we've done well so far, like, that probably does explain a lot about why some damage, like, some fights are pretty It just means I was overall a little bit weaker throughout this section, but it's not too bad. Yeah, I, th I think that, uh, that side scroller was the, the main highlight of those missing ships just because of the the one HP. And now we uh, we take it back to a dark side, but this this time he is infused with the code. And this dark side is special because it's actually Sora's Heartless, which has been buffed by the uh, the computer matrix he's in. For this first fight, Desu actually popped a high ether off rip to get a two-edge blade immediately. And he's gonna be doing two combos into Judgment Triad, the, the old reliable, just trying to get as much damage out as he can. This is his phase two, where he'll do a punching attack through the ground. Desa wants to punish those fists as it's uh, as it's coming up. You can't kill him until he finishes the attack. So now we can just uh, now we can just wait. He's gonna make sure to jump over this shockwave because if you don't and you get hit by that, then he escapes again through the ground. So it was a good one. 
And now we have the, the part two of the fight, which is Anti-Sora. Which is a uh, personal favorite of mine. I love this fight. Everything about it is great. And, uh, okay. Except for that. Yeah, fight's awful, actually. Sorry, <laughs> never mind. And, uh, yeah, this this first phase is just, uh, it's just a brawl. We take him down to DM health, and he does this DM. And uh, this DM will end with the Golden Keyblade at Mega Slam, which we want to, uh, like, there's a little area highlight. So that someone wants to get in there and use uh, Dragon Drop. Very cool uh, ability, which puts him back to a shadow. The Dragon Drop ability normally symbolizes, like, the end of the fight, because it's a very free kill on the shadow after the fact. And right here... Okay, this is fine. So, uh, phase, phase two and three, Sora's Heartless will summon clones. And uh, Dessa actually wants to line up uh, horizontally to the clones and do two hits into Judgment Triad. And if he does it right, the clones instantly die, which is huge because, especially in phase three, those clones can be very problematic if they're uh, like flying in. Because they have like this um, dash ability, and so they're just like dashing back and forth and like getting in, getting out, being very annoying. There we go. That's, That's perfect. I'm gonna try this. Very nice. And yeah, once the clones go, Sora will DM, which is basically his his own undoing. This, this is what we want to see. So it's it's happy days. Uh oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Very nice. Love right. to see that. No, the fight's not done! No! <laughs> wait, wait, wait! Don't clap! Oh, Don't clap! <laughs> there we go! Oh, yeah. That's Woo. the one! There we are! <laughs> Very yeah, so nice! It's like a five-phase five fight. You go from dark side into free anti Soros basically, and then just a little shadow, which is basically like what Soros Heartless actually ended up being <clears throat> in Cage 1 as well, for example, with Follow Bastion. Yes. And same with Recorder here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as, uh, is weak. yeah. As Dessa mentioned earlier, that this game is uh, is it uses a lot of um, a lot of lore and fundamentals from the. I'll other catch games. you up right here. How do you spell speedrun? Uh, well, uh, SP Before without the space. Oh, it's, it's with 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 uh, without the space. Rather. Well, this game, no, <laughs> it does spell it with. The space, which is, uh, I, it, came, it was like popular way before the speedrun scene started, I guess. But it's I don't know, it feels. Unfortunate to read every single time. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, here we go. Now Dessa is going to be finalizing his chips using the speedrun chips. Uh, the the timings for the speedrun chips are actually pretty decent, minus Destiny Island. Destiny Island, for some reason, is very unforgiving with its speedrun chip, as Dessa mentioned earlier on the run. I'm not going to mention that I didn't get the Hollow Bash one. You didn't? Uh oh. Well, it's not a problem. I'm not going to mention it. Uh, yeah. We'll just, we'll just pretend to move on. Yeah, we're at now at a very good spot. This is pretty much the build we're going to be sticking with for the rest of the run. And now we're revisiting the revisits of the revisits inside the revisits. So we're going through uh, all the worlds. And the interesting thing about these worlds is that there are multiple endings for how these worlds end. Depending on your dialogue, the actions you take it de uh, decides on which ending you get. For the categories of this game, that's irrelevant. So we, uh, we just do the quickest option we can for destiny island they the the trio ask for your help or the duo sorry ask for your help to find uh Tidus, and we, we're just like nah yeah. like, we're just gonna we're just gonna get just myself not helping in well we say we don't help but we do end up helping yeah it's i don't know it's weird we, we just don't want to <laughs> be seen like with those things. dorks we don't want to be seen <laughs> with them and now we find huey dewey and louie which uh, yeah, the three ducklings, and uh, I believe the uh, to get the right is that the you you have to find Huey, Dewey, and Louie, but in the order it's Louie, Dewey, and Huey. Yeah, that, that always exactly. throws me off. Go backwards. Yeah, you, you mentioned it backwards. For the uh, for Louie and Dewey, it's uh, just find them there, hidden uh, behind or underneath or next to blocks. And for Huey, we actually have um, this fight next to it. The nice thing about this stretch of the game is that the enemies from the worlds are used in this area. And even though the stat, their, their stats are buffed and they're stronger, they're still shadows, they're still soldiers. We're built to deal with them very easily. So 
it isn't at all a problem. It only gets bad when enemies that we had already struggled with get uh, get a boost. That, that's when it gets... Ooh. That was very... You've had some very, very nice fights this run, I'll be honest. It's been very nice. All right, now that is Traverse Town. <clears throat> We're now followed with a few more basic worlds. We still have like Wonderland, Olympus, Agrabah, and Holobash to go. Wonderland is... They're all like very much condensed versions of what you were doing before. You were looking for uh, Destiny Islands. We were just exploring a little bit. Traverse Town, as much we were finding the Ducklings. Here we're trying to get Alice's story straight and just help the world in general because they're all at memory loss. And Olympus. Olympus is actually a little different because we're not going back to turn based combat. It's just going to be like a, not a tournament format like in older games. It's just more like a challenge format. We have three challenges that we have to beat. Agaba unfortunately takes the worst part of its world and we have to follow Yaga or find him, similar to the run, and it's just as RNG heavy, just way shorter. Colbashan is actually kind of interesting because it does put emphasis on, well, just, I guess, platforming, because that really becomes comes to the forefront and Hello Bash all the blocks right. aligned in a very peculiar way to yeah. somehow weave yourself. Yeah, it's, it's a very nice uh, area where instead of, uh, like Dustin mentioned, instead of using the Hollow Bastion gimmick of stripping you of a lot of your, uh, a lot of your utility stuff, it actually makes you uh, perform things that you've been doing throughout the whole game just very well. It's very heavy on the puzzles and the movement. It's, it's a very, very good like final uh, area in the game. Alright, so this first challenge is posed by Hercules. We're supposed to defeat as many shadows as possible. How do you think I can get? Oh, I'm thinking like 50, maybe 60 if you play it right, but it's, right. it's going to be a bit weird. Let's see. Yeah. we got to prepare for this. Like, get, got to get 2 HP. Right, right. Uh, that's Ready? important. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to use any items, but we want to get 2 HP. Alright. Alright. Are you buttons working? Three, three. No. Just like a little... This is a, oh, that's so, oh, oh wait, there's a diamond. Oh, the, uh, oh no. So yeah, <laughs> the first challenge you're meant to beat a lot of enemies, but it doesn't really matter. You always get the next outcome. Mm -hmm. The second challenge is defeating a wave of enemies, and then followed by defeating a specific enemy out of five. Though that one will be consistent every time. Whenever you do that for the first time, once you repeat it, it'll be a different one. And the last one is just a bunch of enemies that we are gonna fight. So if there's anything we have, that'll be a good time. We have a $15 <laughs> donation from Geister Carl, who says, "I admit, I'm normally not a fan of Kingdom Hearts games, but this version looks very interesting. Definitely underappreciated. Good RNG for your fights." And that is going to the Fort Boyard heroic mode. Well. I will need some good RNG here, because, as mentioned, shadows are always shadows, but wizards and invisibles are always wizards and invisibles. It's always scary to face off with them. And it starts with three wizards, then we get two wizards and an angel star, and now we get two wizards and invisible, who cannot get hit by magnet, but he's been, like, pretending like he could, because he was just getting hit by those hits as well. He was just vibing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he stayed for the vibes. <laughs> he, like, he, uh, he passed the vibe check. He's in. So yeah, uh, it, this uh, this area is very scary. It, having wizard, ooh, stop forty is great. Having the wizards and uh, invisibles off screen is uh, is true fear because they, if, if left to their own devices a bit, they can really catch you out when you least want them to. And you would not think that with how well Desa did that fight. Like that fight, uh, or that like. Uh, String of fights can be extremely terrifying, but Dessa made it look like his bread and butter, which is very sweet. Now, Yago. He can mean any it's... of these blocks. I honestly expect him to be like in the. <laughs> like, I don't expect him to show up fairly early. A lot of times you have to just destroy all of them and then fall in throughout the room. Luckily, the following is not that bad because you can just spawn one of the four corners, and as I learned yesterday, he can also spawn in your corner. And you yes. just have to hunt them down, basically. Similar to what we did in the regular world. There are also the other characters there, as well as Kafar. It gives you a little text box, which sucks. But you have mostly just the other Disney characters, which gives you a lot more time. Because they have 
this dialogue. Uh, yeah. uh, are we yeah, are we really easy. taking it to the last block? Uh, oh, there we go. Right. Okay. And he's up there as well, which very nice. There we go. Yeah, the, uh, I mean, fit to the world, it, it is. Uh, it, it can just be awful because you're gonna get every character with their dialogue boxes. You're gonna have to really go out of your way to find Iago. Sometimes he's in the first like three boxes, and it's great. And other times you see it like that. Yep. Can be super fast. Can be take like I think 45-ish seconds to lose total if it really takes as long. As right. So now, Hollow Bastion, we have three puzzles. The first one just introduces us to us. We hit the lamp, and then we hit the little pedal. Now, the second one is the dangerous part because we have the metal block, I mean, the invisibles. Mm -hmm. The metal blocks are like the true enemy here because they. You can clank easily, and that'll just cancel your combo. So I try to not do exactly what I'm doing right here, as in fight them in that direction, but. <laughs> they, they are stacked. <laughs> 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 there. <laughs> Right. That was actually great. That still worked out, yeah. yeah. But they were chilling up there. Yeah, they we, were chilling. We, we mentioned the vibe check. Passed again. <laughs> Very nice. So, yeah, we mentioned earlier where you do not want to have an invisible off screen, and that fight is like contrary to the rule. Where, I mean, except for that fight, that's had a great fight. Normally, the invisibles like to separate and do their own thing side by side, and you can't fight two of them at once if they're separated. So, you have to like ignore one of them and just hope that nothing happens. So it, it is like a bit weird for commentary's sake to mention, like, you have to be very careful. You have to keep them inside all times. And then if the fight went different, Des is just like <laughs> looking that way. And the other guy's here, like, just throwing everything at him. Des is just like, nah, I want this one, actually. All right, now we have feet. Which feet we can... Uh, please don't. Okay, because I would have had to redo the entire thing. No. Um, <laughs> You try and stagger him all the time because he can throw several attacks. He can throw skills, he can do his little punch rush, or he can throw his bowling ball, which we want to see the bowling ball. Hey, yo, he's stuck. Nice. If he throws the bowling ball, we can guard it. You can either deplete himself or guard the bowling ball towards him, and that'll knock him out. If you then approach him, it's like a little secret way to beat this fight. He will then just continue. I was about to say, him getting stuck there is not like bad thing, is it? Yeah. <coughs> but I mean, it's not. Yeah, it was, it has, that was actually pretty sweet. The fact that he was like, kept that made things very simple. Could have thrown that ball a little earlier, but... Yeah. So, we have platforming puzzles. Olympia doesn't care. We <laughs> basically just skip most of these puzzles. We only do this one. But this one I actually do properly, because the auto target, which is better swing towards the defender, so we try to catch this cycle. There we go. We don't have air slot here, by the way. Glide you would have, but... Glide is very bad at this stage of the game, and it's not worth the minion just for this. And then we go like this, skip the second half of this, and skip the entire final puzzle, but just... Yeah. Whoop. It's interesting you know. that the devs had the idea in mind that you would be able to skip it, and they tried to like stop you from doing so, but with stuff like Olympio, it's still you're able to make the jumps, which is very cool. And now we swap back to Oblivion for the final fight. You want to explain it? Because I will probably try and... Not die. Yes, I'll do my best. So we are actually going to fight Roxas, a very uh, a fan favorite in the series, and uh, this will once again follow the principles of pretty much every fight uh, from Hollow Bastion onwards, where we want to be very careful with how we deal with him. He's very strong. He has a lot of damage. That's fine. Yeah, that's uh, we're okay. So Dessa wants to get him to about 1.8 bars of health, about 1.7 if he wants to be safe. And he wants to have a pairing of um, two edge blade, low HP, and maybe not that low. <laughs> not zero. Okay. This is like this is perfect. So he's now gonna position correctly, and he's gonna double judgment triad. If he does it right, Roxas will be just dead after both of them. That's the first. There we go. Very nice. Very very clean fight. Very nice. And now cool. because. There's still a tiny bit of gameplay, but that was pretty much like the last part of the run we did. Mm -hmm. We just have to approach the door, examine the last card that Roxas gives us that basically unveils all the secrets that Recoded has been alluding towards. Mm -hmm. And then we have time. So, right. Now, there we go. Woo! All right. Oh, I should have stalled for a second. Oh, the. Oh. <laughs> The lineup would have been perfect. Would have been really good. 
<clears throat> all right yeah so oh. this was recoded honestly it's like a really fun run as logic mansion fraud this and as i reiterated this game like it has a lot of possibilities for routing this was a rather difficult route where we tried to be as quick as possible obviously but like uh, also for the sake of getting our stats but you can substitute those with all kinds of chips and it's pretty easy to get into we just need like some kind of mechanics guide maybe i need to try to put that up but aside from that, that'd be it from me. Do you have anything you want to say? Uh, yeah, well, obviously, massive uh, appreciation and congrats to Dessa. It's, uh, he is uh, he's a maestro at all the KH games, and it is very cool to see a game, as Dessa mentioned, with a lot of so much like depth and variety be showed off at a, a big event. It's very cool to see, man. All right, and yeah, that'll be from us. Make sure to catch stream two <laughs> at, like, I think it was 9.30. We're going to have yeah. Kina on there as well. Mm -hmm. Personal uh, favorite, and <coughs> I'm gonna be there too. Oh, yeah? <laughs> that will be my commentator, so we'll be buddied up for this event. So, yes, uh, we will both be back on stream two later tonight. And that'd be it from us. Amazing. Let's hear it one more time for Desa. <laughs> Woo! What an absolutely fantastic run. Like we said, about 12 hours we've got Canon. That will be Insert Logic running that on stream two. Uh, we are going to take a small break and restart the stream. Do not go anywhere. I want to see that donation total at 54,000 once we get back. And the next one we've got coming up is Harvard running Natural Spirit here at ESA Summer 23. See you all soon.